Okay. Hello, everyone. How are we doing on this uh, finale evening of the White Lotus? Are we overwhelmed? Underwhelmed? Excited? Satisfied? Disappointed? Frustrated? Let's talk about it. That's what we're here to do to talk about it. This is tonight's live after show for the White Lotus Season 2. Now, the last six weeks, I've had the episodes ready and locked and loaded. You know, I saw them in advance and put the reviews out there for you all to enjoy. But as you can see, a little bit different ball game tonight. I did not get the episodes in advance, which was cool because we had a watch party tonight. And I appreciate every single one of you all joining me on the watch party. You can see my reactions of all the foolery tonight if you guys want to watch that replay. But uh, we are here to talk about this finale, what worked, what didn't work unanswered questions if you guys watch the watch along we watched the mike white after thing that he talked about he gave us some answers we'll talk about that uh we'll talk about our favorite episodes favorite characters uh how do we feel about their conclusions and there was a tidbit of what we can expect with season three and we'll talk about that tonight too so before we get into tonight's festivities do your boy a favor there's a button on the screen right now it's like a thumb up it's like a thumbs up you know emoji click that for hit that button do me a favor, click the thumbs up. Uh, also, share this video. If you have a social media presence, um, you know, TikTok or Twitter or, or IG, go ahead and share it to, to your family and friends that love talking about the show because we're going to be here probably uh, for an hour or so. We'll see where the conversation takes us, but go ahead and share it. But more importantly, we're live, y'all. So go ahead and leave your thoughts in that live chat wherever it is on the screen. Again, pros, cons. We'll get into favorite characters, favorite episodes, favorite moments, things that didn't work, and, and of course, season three and all that fun stuff. So we'll, we'll get into that, but leave your thoughts in the live chat. And also, I've done this a few times on this channel, and I've had a lot of fun doing it, and that is sharing the link to tonight's stream, which means that you, yeah, you right there, I'm talking about you, yeah, yeah, you can join tonight's stream if you want, but hit me up if you follow me on Instagram or Twitter, DM me and say, hey, E, I would love to be on tonight's uh, discussion for the White Lotus, and I'll send you the link to the stream. So if you want to be on tonight's stream and share all your thoughts, um, you know, you don't have to be here for... 10 minutes, 20 minutes. You could be here for like five minutes and say, hey, I like the episode. I didn't like it and give you your reasons why and then go ahead and watch the rest of the stream or you can stay on, you know, as long as you want. So if you all want to join the stream tonight, hit me up on Instagram or Twitter. You can find those links in the description of this video and say, hey, e, I want to be on tonight. I would love to talk about it with you and we'll make it happen. So, ah, man, so many feelings, y'all. How you doing tonight, by the way? How are we feeling tonight on December 11th? Are we happy about the finale? Are we sad about it? I'm kind of in between because there's that side of me, inside of my brain, where it's like, I wish this would have happened. I wish we got that answer. I wish they would have went that route. But then as someone that has been watching movies and shows and been covered on this YouTube channel, I have built this kind of system in my head where it's like, okay, separate what my expectations were. Separate what I wanted to see in the episode and just look at what we got. So when I think about it that way, that's where I'm kind of in the middle because <laughs> there was some things, some theories you all had said in the last few weeks that I loved and some theories that I shared with you all that I thought would have been interesting. Some of it played out the way we kind of assumed it would. Some of it didn't play out the way I would have expected at all. Um, but that's where I'm at right now. I'm kind of in between on my feelings. I, I definitely would say if I were to compare season one finale versus season two, I felt more satisfied with the season one finale if I'm being honest. Um, but again, I'm going to rewatch it and I'm going to probably put out like a full review for you all tomorrow. But right now I'm kind of in the middle, but we're going to navigate my feelings. We're going to navigate through your feelings and figure out what we think about the finale by tonight's uh, end of this stream. But again, thank you all for joining me. Uh, it means a lot to me. We got what, 452 people watching live. That's a lot of White Lotus fans. And I appreciate you all sharing the finale with me tonight. So again, thumbs up, share, comment. And if you want to join the stream, y'all, I'll, I'll, I'll invite you. If you hit me up on the DMs and say, hey, E, I want to talk White Lotus and I want to talk about it with you. So hit me up on the DMs if you guys uh, have Instagram or uh, Twitter and I'll share that link with you. But with that being said, let's, wa let's walk through it. Walk through the tonight's finale. Let me actually pull up some uh, images here. I guess, where do you all want to start? Do we start with the I guess the weakest, I hate to say the word weak, because I love all these characters. I, I really enjoyed this season. Um, but I, I, I would say this plot, these characters here. Not not a lot going on with them in the finale. Of course, if y'all saw the, if y'all watched the watch along, there was a scene with Valentina. And not to get too explicit, but I mean, it's a rated R show. We're all adults here. I, I didn't know Valentina was, was, was packing all that heat, y'all. When she was in after, you know, her and Mia hooked up and she walked past the screen, 
I, if you saw the stream, the watch along, I lost my train of thought because I, I just didn't, I didn't know Valentina. I didn't know. I just didn't know. Shout out to you. We know she walks to work every day. So, I mean, it makes sense, right? <laughs> she is not Miss Leg Day. Anyway, Valentina and Mia. What I love about their characters and their arc this season, we'll start with Valentina because she was someone very early on in my review to say, okay, what, what are we doing with Valentina? We know what Armand was in season one. We know how his story ended death um but what, what was going on with valentina very early on she seemed to be very like straightforward she told bert when he got off the boat oh i'm surprised you made it here because we're super old very in your face um very when it comes to work environment she's about about that you know that book as far as like procedures and operations don't talk don't laugh go to work do work nothing else but as the season went on i think what There we go. Put a one in the chat if you guys can hear me somehow, some way. My mic got disconnected, but put a one in the chat if you guys can hear me. But back to Valentina. I think it was episode three where she was. Um, we got a little bit of backstory, a little bit, it's like a little bit of character stuff. She was walking to work. <clears throat> the gentleman was trying to, you know, get her attention. She didn't want to hear that, but she was, you know, feeding the cat. And, you know, we got a light, a lighter side of Valentina. And then as the episodes went by, we find out that she has the feelings for Isabella. We find out that she likes girls, she's a lesbian, and obviously we see what happens with Mia. So I would say her story was was interesting. I mean, it wasn't a lot going on there um, with Valentina, but I do like that she was able to at least open up herself and, you know, explore that side of her sexuality. And it seems like she had a good time with Mia, right? And it seems like she might explore other, you know, dating women now, now she's had that experience. So I like the fact that she's able to explore her sexuality, that she was able to confront um, who she wants to be. I know she still is like hiding herself and then every much so she doesn't want to come out to the world, right? That's, that's that person's individual uh, decision on how they want to come out. But I think overall, comparing to what we thought Valentina was going to be just a stern, I don't want to say stuck up, but it's kind of stern and kind of like closed off and kind of mean, if I'm being honest, to something that was a little bit, you know, as the season went on, I really enjoy Valentina. I, my heart broke when I saw Isabella was uh, married to Rocco. Um, and, you know, seeing all that stuff was was very sad. So I, I actually, considering what I thought, we, where I thought she was going to be kind of a throwaway character, I like how Valentina's story lined up, which kind of pairs up to what's going on with her um, her sexual partner that gave her a sexual awakening. Mia, when we first met her in season two episode one just broke up with a boyfriend kind of lost kind of upset and now she's on this kind of um you know adventure with her friend lucia and you know we see her kind of and i guess now i'm kind of as i'm talking this through it's very interesting that we paired those two characters together valentina and mia because if you think about episode one how they were kind of indifferent is, is in regards to valentina being closed off and not being um addressing you know who she wants to be with who she wants to sleep with and then seeing that with mia recently breaking up with a boyfriend not really want to party not really want to hang out and by the end of the season by the end of this episode they're both kind of like mia's singing at the at the bar she has what she was kind of looking for and, and kind of maybe opening her career to being a singer and then Valentina kind of opened herself to maybe dating someone that she likes. That's a, that's a woman. So I think, again, it's not explosive and, you know, super drama filled or shocking moments. But I like that, that those characters went from being closed off to now being a little bit more open. I don't know. Let me know what you all think about that. Uh, and we're going to get to the rest of these characters because we got some stuff to talk about. But let me uh, let me catch up to the chat again. We got 563 of uh, y'all joining us live tonight. And I appreciate every single one of you all. And again, if you guys can hit that thumbs up, it would mean a lot. And um, share this to any, you know, White Lotus fans that you know out there that would love to talk about tonight's finale and their, all the different characters. And uh, leave your thoughts in the comments. In the meantime, I see we got some, some love, some super chats coming in. Let me... Uh, pull this one up here <clears throat> shout out to Nisi smith who's, who's been a part of this community for a while and she's she she pretty much watches a lot of stuff that i watch she's got she has great taste in movies and shows so i appreciate you Nisi. she says love the show and your recaps didn't see that coming oh we got some yeah we, we talk about what we didn't see coming but shout out to you Nisi, and i appreciate the love and support on the um 
you know, in this way with the super chat, ten dollars super chat, and just being a part of this community. You mean a lot. I appreciate you, and I thank you for the support there. Uh, and I think I saw another one. Um, here we go. My girl Harley. What's going on, Harley? Uh, I was I was expecting more, and that, and that's what I said up top, Harley. I felt like. You know, it's hard, right? Because we have these plots and themes and, and um, ideas and theories that we have in our head. The mafia is going to be involved, which that ended up being the case. Um, Cameron was going to be killed by Ethan. Um, Ethan was going to kill, you know, his wife. And, and none of that played out. It didn't play out. But how for what they gave us does it work for the narrative they were trying to tell regarding this season? Really kind of shine a light on like sex right and kind of how our characters respond to sex and or lack of sex and how sex can be used as a tool for some characters how sex can be used as a way to communicate through their loved ones uh their partner so it's very interesting in that sense and i think the more i think about certain plots like again i like what happened with valentina on a more kind of just like a human level it's nice to see people kind of be who they want to be and, and be open to themselves and all that good stuff but yeah i mean at the same time i hear you harley there were some moments where you're just like man that could have been like greg i mean we'll talk about it later ladies and gentlemen but like are we just assuming that greg got away with the money he got the prenup he's going to be rich now are we assuming that this was conspired by Greg, that he was the one that set all this up. I mean, we're just, we just have that in our heads now. We just got to sit with that. Well, we don't because I, because Mike White did address that at the little after show. I'll talk about that later, but you know, that's kind of up in the air. Um, the other thing that's kind of up in the air was did Ethan have Daphne's legs up in the air, right? When they walked off on the beach, like what, the f where, where did y'all go? And what did y'all do? That's my question. And Mike White kind of addressed that tonight in the after show. And I'll just say it now, the way he phrased it, I, I'm, this isn't verbatim, but he pretty much said, he pretty much said yes for me as, as far as if they hooked up. He said that both da um, Harper and Ethan got a piece of Daphne and Cameron. So, Got a piece. What, what are you talking about, Mr. White? Got a piece of them. So that, to me, pretty much says that, yeah, Ethan, whether it was kissing, like, you know, Harper says her and Cameron were just kissing. I don't know about that. But um, I wanted to Ethan and Daphne just do some kissing. Or was there some, you know, motion in the ocean, if you know what I mean? So I'm very curious about that. But I think when Mike White said that, when he said that they got a piece of those two, that I think that's pretty much saying that something happened. Right. And if you think about Ethan's character, after he had that moment with Daphne, he was calm, cool, collective, right? He wasn't all tensed up, pissed off, wonder if his wife had more done with uh, Cameron. So I think it's pretty much safe to say for my House of Dragon fans out there, you know, I lost an eye and I gained a dragon. I think my boy Ethan slammed those cheeks with Daphne. And he's pretty much like clean slate, one for one, game time match. I don't know. I don't know. Let me know what y'all thought about that. But shout out to uh, again to uh, Nisi and shout out to uh, my home girl uh, discussing Harley, showing some love and support in that way. I really appreciate y'all. And again, I appreciate all y'all joining us live. And again, if you guys want to, like I said up top, if you want to join the stream, I want to check my my uh, social medias here. If you want to join the stream, <clears throat> hit me up on the DMs. Uh, uh, via Instagram or Twitter, and I will send you the link. I will send you the link so you can join and have a discussion with me live on the YouTubes. Um, but in the meantime, let me catch up with some of these chats. Again, just to kind of recap, let me know how you all feel about Valentina and Mia, their conclusions to the story. Satisfied, dissatisfied, didn't really care. Let me know your thoughts on that. And then I guess we'll get to them a little bit later, but do you feel as though, I think one of the burning questions, will too, Greg get away with the money, and did Daphne and Ethan hook up wherever they? And by the way, we're, I'm gonna rewatch the episode, but where, where they were walking was that the same area that Quentin was telling, um, telling Tanya about that house where the woman didn't want to sell her house, and something about some guy died or something. Was that the same island or the same house? I might be. My geography might be off, but there was some significance to where they went. So I wonder if that plays into it at all. So, but let me know in the comments if you think they hooked up. If they, you know, if Ethan got in there with Daphne. Um, let's see here. 
Let me just catch it up with some of you guys' comments, which again, there's a lot of them in here. And if you guys, the best way, and, and this isn't in any way saying you have to give a super chat, but the best way for me to kind of navigate through these comments and see your comment would be through a super chat. Uh, but I'm going to try to get to many, as many as I possibly can, because there's a lot of y'all showing some love and support. And I want to make sure you guys get your voices heard. And uh, again, if you want to have your voice heard, if you want to see yourself on screen, I can share that link with you if you want to uh, join me tonight, which I'm going to, I think I saw a couple DMs and I'm going to invite some people on here that I saw shot me a DM. Uh, Stephanie showing some love again. She showed me some love on the, uh, the watch along and then she's showing some love again tonight. So shout out to Stephanie. She says, RP Tanya, we're going <laughs> to, it's so fitting. And if you, Stephanie, you were there literally like maybe 10 seconds before she did what she did. I was like, wow, she's just going to end up slipping and busting her head and bam, <laughs> it happened. Which again, as I said in the watch along, it's kind of, I don't say poetic, but it's kind of crazy how in season one, she put her mom's, uh, ashes in the water and now she is up dying in the water and the way she went about doing it was very very on brand right <laughs> she's one of those people that that could happen to someone her slipping and busting her head which like come on time you go down the goddamn stairs you see the stairs right there. <sighs> Fitting way to go out, I guess. But uh, R.I.P. to Tanya. Hope Greg gets uh, Hope Greg gets his in season three, which uh, Stephanie we talked about in, in the after show. Mike White kind of opened up that door, and we'll talk about that later. Uh, I hope they go to and, and that's another thing he mentioned that it might be somewhere uh, on the um, in the east. We might go somewhere in the east coast. So, but uh, shout out to Stephanie again. Great comments. Uh, love that you were in the watch party, uh, and I appreciate the love and support. So, thank you so much, Stephanie. All right. All right. I think I saw one more. Um, let's see here. What do we got here? Tamara with the love saying, I loved your videos throughout the season. I saw a podcast where Mike White said that the next season would be in Egypt. Thoughts? Well, first off, thank you so much for the super chat. And uh, I appreciate that. To answer your question, and I guess I'll just get to the to the question here because I mentioned it earlier, Mike White said about season three, and we'll, we'll still address it at the end of the stream here, but he's pretty much said in his little after show, he wants to explore Eastern culture, and he also mentioned that he would love to explore death. So I don't know if we're going to go Egypt uh, or somewhere in Asia or whatnot, which would be cool. Which would be, be oh, if they went to like Singapore or something, ooh, which I've never been there, but that's on the bucket list to go. But yeah, I think uh, Egypt would be cool. But again, Eastern culture, uh, and, and yeah, I mean, it could be anywhere. Uh, but yeah, Egypt would be pretty awesome. Egypt is a very gorgeous place. And to go back to what I just said about Mike White and him talking about exploring death, um, I don't know why I'm thinking of like <laughs> I guess Egypt mummies and tombs and being, you know, putting a, uh, all that, the, the, the way they look at death is much differently than we look at it, you know, um, here as Americans. So yeah, that would be pretty cool. So uh, very excited. But he did say that we will be exploring death come season three. So I guess put our capping our thinking caps on when we come to season three like who's gonna die who's gonna live and oh i can't wait to see what cast he pulls out for season three that would be a a, a sight to see whoever they cast for season three that would be pretty cool uh but again thank you so much for the question i'm, I'm so glad you enjoyed the videos i enjoyed excuse me i enjoy making them uh, and i appreciate you guys support on those videos but uh yeah season three season three and it makes me wonder too because season three would probably be in production by the beginning of the year and I don't know if we'll get season three next year because season two or season one was in August and then they probably shot it. I don't know. Maybe we'll get season three next year. Um, hopefully we get some news on that in the coming days because we already know they're getting the season three. They announced it weeks ago. But the question is, who's going to be a part of it and where will they be going next? And hey, Greg, y'all, he might be a part of season three. And uh, I wonder if we'll get any other characters from not only this season, but maybe from season one. That would be pretty cool to see what they've been up to. But thank you so much for the love and support there. Um, all right. So let me send this link because there was a couple people that hit me up. Let me send this link to them right quick. <clears throat> and we'll get some other people's thoughts on the episode and obviously give you guys more of my thoughts and, and keep this uh, this party going. But let me just uh, send send the people the link here. And we're going to have uh, some some people stopped in the episode. All right. So StreamYard. Just save this link here. And again, why I'm doing this, because I hate silence on a live stream. Go ahead and hit the thumbs up, share, uh, do all that fun stuff. Uh, we're going to have a good time tonight, y'all. All right. So I got the link here. All right. So let me see what else we got here. Portia was on the down low in the airport. Yes, she was. She was 
glasses on, hat on. It didn't, and, and, and it seems like she's probably going to move on and not think too much of it as far as the situation. Um, but again, we'll address a little bit later. But Mike White did say that season three, who knows, someone out there might be exploring who um, who end up killing those people on the boat, and someone might want some answers. So yeah, we might get some more Greg because again, it is kind of it is kind of sucky that we we're just assuming that Greg got away with it. Um, but yeah. Um, it's been fun following you. Well, thank you so much. And listen, we think alike, right? We, you, you shared the same sentiments and we were wrong, but you know, that's, that's the beauty of shows. You loved, I love that we were wrong because I hate to predict things so often. Um, uh, but we, we were in the same boat with thinking the, the Godfather plot was going to play into the finale with Albie, <clears throat> Bert or Dom being at the wrong place, wrong time, similar to the Godfather car explodes with Al Pacino's wife, but that didn't play out the way it did. So, uh, but anyway, either way, thank you for the super chat and thank you for following the channel and the videos and showing some love. I really appreciate you. So shout out to the love there. All right. So let me get this link and shoot it to some people that hit me up and said they want to be on tonight's stream. And by the way, if you guys do want to join me tonight, just make sure you have a, uh, if you want to show your lovely faces that you have a good you know, little, little light situation going on, a little mic situation going on for we can hear you and see you and um, you can join tonight's stream. So just, uh, just do that for your boy. We'll have a good time. Um, I'm interested. In, OK, my man. D, OK, let me see. Let me get my man. I ain't, I ain't spoke to, to, to D movie man in a minute. So D movie man, if you're watching live, bro, I just sent you the link. Uh, go ahead and uh, join when you can. And then I think uh, discussing Harley, who dropped the, the 50 on us, uh, she would love to join. So let me go ahead and share that link with her as well. Um, so, again, if you all want to join me tonight, just uh, hit me up on Instagram or Twitter. And uh, I'll see you in that link. And we can we can get you in the conversation. Um, but let me see here. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, we got another super chat here. Shout out to Su uh, Silver Scale with the five dollars super chat. My only prediction for the episode was Tanya is safe. <laughs> LOL, well, this show played me so hard. I net Mike White. I net Mike White engineered the confusion. Uh, yeah, it was very. I did not expect that, Silver. We we didn't expect that, right? We we assumed that Tanya was going to be safe because, and he, he pretty much even said it. Mike White said in the little after show that he loves working with Jennifer. Who wouldn't? She's an icon. Um, but he just thought it would be um, fitting for her to die, and that's what happened tonight. And that was your prediction, and I didn't expect her to die. So shout out to you, Silver. Uh, who's been man? You've you've been watching this channel since like Servant, which Servant season four coming up in a couple weeks um excited for that but yeah sh shout out to you showing some love and yeah I didn't, I didn't see that coming i thought she was going to be safe i thought out of all the characters besides like valentina rocco who we saw in episode one i thought everyone else i thought they were going to be the you know the only safe cards but uh yeah in tanya but uh was wrong was wrong about that um let's see here give her an emmy you think she's going to get another emmy let me know in the chat guys how did you all feel about her performance this season versus season one uh, because she did win an Emmy for season one. I'm going to answer my own question here. I think we got more from Tanya this season, would you say? I don't know. I think she, she gave us a little bit more, so maybe she'll get that back-to-back -back Emmy situation going on. But we got a guest in the in the back room that I'm going to bring in here. She showed some love um, with the uh, the Super Chat earlier, and she's now here joining us. Uh, if you want to – is that you want? are you good? You want to – just a thumb up in the back room. You're good. All right. So I'm going to bring her in the back room. Uh, like I said, she showed some love earlier with the super chat, and then she's going to bless us with her grace. And that is discussing Harley. How we Hello. Doing? How are we doing tonight? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Can you hear me okay? Because I can't hear you in my audio. So let me let me see what's going on with the headphone situation. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Hold on. Let me see what's going on here. In the meanwhile, why don't you uh, introduce yourself to the people out there? Oh, there we go. Can you speak for me? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Ian is sounding good. How are you well, doing? I'm doing all right, Arlie. I'm doing good. Uh, you know, the finale, like I said, has me kind of torn because, I, you know, we had our thoughts and theories and predictions and it didn't play out that way exactly. But, you know, from what we did get, I think I'm kind of on the fence. But more importantly, Harley, how are you feeling about this finale? Was it satisfying? Was it disappointing? Did you, did you get all the thrills, chills, and answers, questions answered? 
I was feeling like I was going to get something from like season one, how it all ended. It wasn't mm. such a happy go lucky ending. I was going to no, no, no. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I feel like it missed the mark from like season one and how mm. it all like went down. Like everybody was affected somehow by why what had happened at the hotel. And I don't feel like it it really happened in this season. Interesting. And by the way, I'm such a terrible host, uh, Harley. Why don't you uh, introduce yourself to the people and let them know uh, if you have, you know, I know you have your YouTube going and you got an Instagram. Why don't you introduce yourself to the people and let them know where they can find you if they want to explore your content? Yes. Yeah, so my name's, well, my name's Angela, but I go by Discuss Harley on YouTube and on Instagram. I'm still trying to work on bringing my actual like YouTube to life, but pretty soon, hopefully, I'll have time because I take care of my grandfather, so I don't really have time to like sit down and do a live right now or a YouTube channel right now. So, but you can still follow me on Instagram at Discuss Harley at any time. Definitely, definitely. Well, shout out to you, Harley. Taking care of the family is always admirable and and uh, very nice of you. So, and then I and I can't wait for that YouTube channel to get going because I love talking to you on various different shows and movies. And you got some great opinions, and uh, uh, I'm really excited for you to get that that up and going. But you guys can follow her on Instagram, like she had mentioned. But going back to what you just said, Harley, you felt a little bit disappointed from the conclusion, right? With these characters, you didn't feel like it was a good, satis satisfying conclusion for the characters, not for at the all. main characters. Let's just say. No, not this season. Like yeah. I feel like you know, when with season one, with how even even though the none of the main characters died in season one, we right. still felt the effect of each of of the characters that had left the thing. Um, from the two girls, from mm. the parents, right? Even when that boy had left, family. Yeah, and the, when the yeah. boy had left to stay behind at the mm. actual. Yeah, the, the other son. Yeah. So I feel like I, I feel like that same effect didn't happen this this season. It was everything was like either sex driven or I think it was more of like the background people that was getting more attention this mm, than this last season. Gotcha. So like a Valentina, a uh, 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 Mia, um, you feel like they got a little bit more of a satisfying conclusion than the married couple. Um, Obviously, Tanya and her death, which I guess is the that. How do you feel about that? I was uh, mad. Harley. Was you mad? First of all, I was <laughs> mad that she even went down that road. I said, if this lady don't go down that little oh, road, Harley. I mean, I, I don't know if you saw the why. I'm like, come on, come on, uh, Tanya, just let's go down and stay. I mean, uh, to be fair, um, after an event like that, you just shot three people. or two people, uh, and then you were just on the. You were about to die yourself. I mean, maybe the brain isn't properly functioning i didn't even know she could shoot that good i thought she the way she was just shooting just wild <laughs> yeah yeah no I, I did not so a lot of people were assuming and uh shout out to those that thought that last week when she saw the mafia guy's gun it did kind of play out that way she did grab the gun and just kind of aimlessly shot and end up killing uh quentin and his friend and the one guy so I'm, I'm curious the one guy who swam away you you think he made it back to shore okay or do you think he died and on, on the on his way to the beach or to the to the land so i don't was it that far off between the boat i'm gonna have to rewind the... it, it looked like it was a pretty far distance but it might have been you know just a couple you know the way he was swimming he, uh, he might have made it right he was looking a little little lackluster on that and also too the the captain on the ship i assume he jumped off the ship it's like he jumped off as well um but hell, maybe he went back and got the boat after he saw, you know, and everything went down. I don't know. But yeah, the, the Tanya's death, the way that I, I think it's somewhat fitting in and a little bit disappointing. The reason it was disappointing to me because the Greg situation of it all. We're just assuming that Greg got away with the money. It's not, not a satisfying conclusion there. But as far as Tanya going back to season one, putting her mom's uh, uh, ashes in the water, it's kind of funny how that kind of ties to how she ended up dying is is by the water in the water i should say so it's a little bit of a i guess a, a tie-in there but uh, tanya 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 but uh we got another guest in the back room that i've uh, had on the channel before and love his content and love his take and he's been uh i didn't even know he was a fan of the show to today he shared the uh, the stream link so i'm excited to see his thoughts on the episode and uh i'd like to introduce y'all uh to the first time if this is your first time or if you've seen him before on the channel you might know who he is but uh, if not the movie man in the building what's going on hey what's going on long time no see man how you been doing been pretty good how about yourself Hey man, just trying to stay alive and not hit my head on a on a boat and drown like Tanya, you know? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. 
D Movie Man. This is uh, discussing Harley. Harley, this is uh, D Movie Man. Yeah, hey, that's me too. That's me as well. D Movie Man, we we, we kind of talked about it, my friend. We're, we're kind of getting into the conversation about satisfaction, dis, uh, dissatisfied with the finale. How did you feel about this finale? And we'll kind of get into some of these character storylines. What did you feel about it, my man? Yeah, so I was kind of on the fence about it myself because I think that obviously there's been a lot of buildup and there have been like these little, a, a lot of foreshadowing, a lot of kind of teasing. And I tried to be fair going into it and, and not hype myself up too much because I do know sometimes how you feel about a finale can go off of personal expectation. <laughs> um, and so I tried, I tried to kind of separate that. And I, I think maybe if I give it a minute and kind of maybe revisit it, because I kind of had, I felt a little bit of that um, with the first season um, because I think when you see, um, one of the characters looking outside and you see like someone's body, you know, being, being, you know, presented or loaded up. It was like, okay, so what's this? And then they jump back and we see the progression of that season. And so they do a similar thing here. I think that personally, I thought there was going to be a bit more, what's the word? <laughs> I just thought the, I think, I just thought the dynamics were, were going to be more, in your face, or there were going to be some more definitive moments. I'm fine with ambiguity, um, but I feel like there was a lot more ambigu uh, ambiguity um, here than I thought I was going to get. So it made for kind of an awkward viewing experience because it was almost like I don't know if it was on, on purpose, but it's almost like they took any potential thoughts the audience might have had. <laughs> like, yeah, no, we're going to turn it on his head. Bit of all that. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, I agree with you. And then again, I apologize to Harley about not introducing her uh, to let people know where they can find. I did the same thing with you, D Movement. I didn't learn my, my mistake, man. Why don't you introduce yourself? We'll go back to your comments there. But why don't you introduce yourself to the people and let them know where they can find your content? Yeah. Hey, everyone. This is D Movie Man, fellow cinephile, popcorn addict, and emerging film critic, coming to you with reliable recaps, reviews, and reactions. That is like my channel's tagline. And that's the crux of what I do. I love film, I love cinema. I love talking about it. You know, I do reviews. I do, you know, trailer reactions and the occasional TV show recap. And a lot of my channels just centered around um, my love for that medium and also just tying it in with my, you know, my upbringing, my life, and uh, just really understanding how impactful that medium has been throughout my life. So if you guys are interested, feel free to check me out. D, capital D, dot movie man. Um, that's one word. And then uh, D Movie Man on Instagram, and then on Twitter, uh, Movie Man D and D Movie Man on Letterbox. So yeah, I think that's all. Of it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And we uh, we got five hundred seventy-seven people. So if you guys can show some love to uh, discussing Harley and D Movie Man, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. And by the time this video is like finally uploaded, I'll grab their uh, social media handles and whatnot and put it in the description so you guys can uh, show them some uh, some love by subscribing, subscribing and following. So back to your comments, D Movie Man, as far as the expectations and all that stuff, and Harley brought up earlier you know it's it's i'm gonna rewatch the episode and just think about the season as a whole because there were like you mentioned d movie man there's a lot of like easter eggs there's the whole episode one with the couples with the the head piece of the mm -hmm. wife found her husband cheating and end up burying him in the in the you know the garden and i'm thinking that's gonna probably happen to cam that's gonna probably happen to you know uh, maybe harper but that didn't play out that way and like you said, it kind of plays with our expectations and leaves us thinking and all this stuff. And when it doesn't happen, it's kind of like, oh, man, that's a little dis, you know, not not satisfying. Which brings me to this question, Harley. Just going back to that couple in particular and just addressing the elephant in the room, Daphne and Ethan walking on the beach, going somewhere mysterious, and we're just left to think that they were just talking about the Bible. I don't know what, what, what were they doing, uh, Harley? What did they do, if anything? <laughs> When Aaron did the business, you think they did the business. <laughs> they did the business. You think Ethan is in his head was like, you know what? You 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 kiss my friend from college and maybe some other things. I'm gonna sleep with his wife or whatever they did and make it call it even. Is that what you're thinking, Harley? Yeah, because I feel like even going back to what she said earlier in the with that with the other wife, she was saying like we just gotta take it no matter what happens. So. Mm. It's all like they already like they all play games with each other, and that's right, what they right. do with their lifestyle. Is I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna get you back. <laughs> hey, I hear you. Uh, the movie man, the question's for you, man. Do we think Daphne 
who we knew, who we found out a couple weeks ago, has a son by her trainer, Lawrence. Um, so this isn't her first go around with uh, infidelity. But do we think Ethan hooked up with Daphne in tonight's episode? Um, this obviously ties into the ambiguity piece I was talking about and it's purposely put there to kind of keep you guessing in a sense. But I, I think the reason why it does point towards it is because Ethan was like at the, I think at, at, at the extreme level of irrational emotion and intensity and rage and all of that. And I felt like there would have to be something, something would have to happen to kind of like walk him back or kind of like push him back off the ledge basically mm -hmm. and i kind of feel like if there had to be something then it would be that i don't want it to necessarily be that but considering the circumstances considering uh you know everything with cameron and harper and all that then it would kind of be like a oh well this thing in my mind i've i've even the score and mm -hmm. we can be cool now even though I can mess up where to live, but right. you know, that's if that's what Jeez. works out, they're fine. But yeah. yeah, it just it just seems like there's no way to go from up here being to, at a, such a ten to calm it down yeah, for no yeah like catharsis there. So, yeah. Right, I agree with you. And everyone in the chat, let us know. Uh, I, I'll probably put a poll in, in the chat here in a second, but let us know in the chat. Do we think Ethan and, uh, and Daphne hooked up? And if so, why? Or, or if not, why? Uh, but I'm totally with uh, Harley and the movie men. I think that they did have a moment of uh, having an affair. First off, Daphne probably doesn't care. Uh, and I think if Ethan, if, if Cameron found out, he probably wouldn't care either. But I think for more, the only person I think really, I don't want to say benefit out of it, but I can see, you know, fully going through with it would be Ethan because in his mind, maybe it's not only a screw you to his wife, but it's also a screw you to Cameron for the, you know, the years in college, we found out that every time that Ethan would find a girl that he liked, that Cameron would find his way into getting into the middle of it and sleeping with that girl that he was interested in. So I think in his mind, this might be like a, you know, an F you to literally, uh, but, but with his wife, uh, but not, I don't even think Cameron would care. Um, to be honest with you all, which was so interesting. Again, we don't know. Do, I guess toss it to you, Harley. Do you think Cameron knew about Lawrence and that his that his kid wasn't his kid? Do you even, or if he if he did know, he cared. Like, is that something that you were interested in finding out, or a conclusion, or an answer for with that storyline? I don't think he cares. Right. They. I feel like they both know what type of relationship they are in, and they all okay. They're both okay with it. You can just definitely right. tell they put up a front for everyone else but we all know because even when she was calling out him for him to talk to the baby like he was not interested he didn't want to talk that. that's what yeah when and when i think that's where yeah. it stems from yep he definitely knows the movie man you think my man knew about the baby not being his but more importantly does he even care yeah um <laughs> cameron just seems to be a very um aloof person um uh, i don't know if that's just emotionally or if that's just his personality or something else but um, he seems to, I just think because he has his money and his, his wealth and whatever else, I, I don't think he really, however he chooses to live his life, it doesn't lend itself towards extreme emotions or concern or anxiety or anything else. Because even throughout the, I mean, even when we get this, you know, this, not to jump ahead, but when we, when we get that whole brawl moment, the fact that he's able to kind of walk back in and sit down like, hey, you guys, and we've had a great trip. I'm like, you, it's even though we see this bruiser on your face. So right. for whatever reason, I just think mentally or emotionally, he's someone who just <clears throat> goes with the flow um, right. Right. when the actions are extreme and over the top. So that, yeah. I think that's just him. Yeah, no, I agree with you. And especially as your comments, when you mentioned that the just Ethan, his whole this mood in this episode was on the edge, so mad, so upset. And then after he had his little moment with Daphne, everything's just fine now. And then not only that, but then this whole season, and I'll have to go back and watch maybe early on, but I don't think Daphne or Harper and Ethan kissed. I don't think they kissed at all this season. If they did, it was just maybe like a little, all right, we'll see you later, bye. A little peck on the lips, but... He didn't, then all of a sudden he wants to get, he wants to have sex with his wife and get intimate with her. So it, it definitely speaks to that something sparked inside of Ethan to, to lead him to that. And then I think Mike White said it, said so much so without saying it about if they hooked up, but he said a comment in a little after show about if they did hook up. He didn't flat out say yes or no, but he said that he, he wrote it in a way that he, the characters both got something from the other characters. You know, um, we, we find out that. 
Miss uh, Harper and Cameron kiss. So she got a little piece of that. And then him saying that Ethan got a piece of um, Daphne kind of alludes that, that something happened between those two, that they end up getting something from these characters and kind of put their foot in the water per se to kind of test the waters on living another life or living something uh, that's different out of the relationship. So I think it's safe to say that they hooked up. But question I have for you, Harley, is going back to uh, last week, the question was, did Harper and, and uh, Cameron hook up? She told she tells Ethan the truth in this episode, and I say truth very lightfully. She said that they just kissed. Do you think that's as far as they went, uh, Harley, or you think there was some more things that went down between this time with Ethan in the water to him going up to the hotel? It's probably about ten to fifteen minutes that weren't accounted for. They definitely did something. Yeah, more than kissing. Yeah, definitely more than kissing. I think she she can hide it more than the other two. You can definitely tell that she's more aware of what's really going on with everything. Because you saw how mad she was when she saw that condom on that chair. Because she really blanked out before he she confronted him. Like, she with it. Like, when she asked the question first, and she was like, what happened? And he never said anything. She knew. So I feel like when a woman asks you, so what happens? Just go ahead and tell her the truth because then it's always going to be on her mind. And when he did finally tell her, that's when she she was like, you know what? I'm going to have to get back at this man for mm -hmm. doing this to me. Yeah, Even yeah, if you yeah. didn't do anything. Yeah. I think you did something still anyway. Mm -hmm. What about you, D-Movie Man? Do you think that Harper and Cameron just went as far as the kiss? Or do you think there was a little bit more activities going on before uh, Ethan came banging on the door? I know this is probably... <laughs> just the irrational uh hopeful side of me like a small part of me like really wants to believe that that's all it was and yeah. maybe she second guessed herself and maybe stopped herself from progressing like maybe had the thought like oh maybe i will do this and maybe i could maybe i'll get back at him or you know maybe i'll i'll you know i'll, I'll one up him but maybe in the moment it was kind of like mm, do i really want to do this and then yeah. maybe, and then by the maybe by the time he kind of went up there, you know, maybe she had kind of talked herself out of the moment, or just she kind of knew that it wasn't going to go any further. That's that's yeah. kind of what I'm thinking. I know there's room, like again, for interpretation, but I'm kind yeah. of thinking that it might have been one of those things where I, I had the intent to do this, I thought about doing this, and then maybe in the moment it's like maybe this isn't a good idea. So that's right. kind of. That's interesting. That's very, very interesting because it, it, just thinking it back and, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, uh, Harley and, and D movie man, everyone in chat, but we learned that Harper, what she does for her living, she's a lawyer. She represents people that are rightfully or wrongfully accused or not, like th things were done wrong to them at their workspace, whether it was, um, you know, abuse, discrimination, um, sexual assault. So it is so interesting that she would, um, even kiss someone. And I would assume based on that conversation when she was describing her work life and then we saw Cameron, like how he feels about the workplace and how people speak up and how he feels like he pretty much saying, you know, we live in this time now where people can just accuse people of something without, you know, just that type of boss that probably has said something to a, a woman walking by or maybe said something that he thought was just, oh, you know, I'm just being, you know, nice. Uh, so it is interesting that she end up even if they didn't have sex, even kissing him to me is still kind of crazy that she went that far, just knowing that she probably sees, she probably is in courtroom with the camera every day, and she probably despises these guys every day for what they do to other women. So it is very interesting to see them actually having, even if it is a kiss, just that far. Her going that far is very, very interesting. But I want to just rewind a little bit, go back to some secondary characters, just to get you guys' thoughts on, starting with you, DB Man. How did you feel about the conclusion for Mia and Valentina? Um, two characters that Harley mentioned earlier were kind of secondary background characters who end up getting a pretty satisfying conclusion, considering how like quiet of a character they were, and they were kind of in different spots than when they uh, ended up. How did you feel about Valentina and uh, and, and Mia, DB Movie Man? Um, well, <laughs> Valentina, the thing is, um, Murray Bartlett uh, really, <laughs> really kind of raised the bar or just kind of really pushed the standard, um, knocking it out of the park uh, with Armand the first season. Yeah. So um, I really didn't think, um, even though Valentina looked interesting, I didn't think she would be able to top that character. And in a way, she doesn't, but there's something very different about the energy she brings. I, I, yeah. I she was probably one of my favorite characters because she was so sarcastic and, and, and gruff the whole peppa pig moment and yeah 
yeah. stuff like that. I even heard that the actress said that she improvised that. Improvised that line. Yeah, I saw that the other day too. Yep. She put it in there. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, Valentina just like really grew on me as we went on uh, went along. And right, right. I think it's interesting where they left her because there's I think there's room obviously for her to explore her sexuality. She seems like a very person. Yeah. So she's obviously not had any opportunity to kind of get outside this rigid space. Um, so I think they leave her in a in an okay spot, and I think at the very least, uh, being okay, you know, being at peace with her coworker and you know her fiance. I think is the fiance or husband. Uh, Rocco. Yeah, Rocco. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah, yeah. They. She seems to be like you just mentioned. I think she's going to be more receptive to people at work, being more friendly and not so you know sh- stressful at the workplace and allowing people to talk to each other. So, yeah. No, I think. Um, she definitely, uh, to me, she probably had one of the most biggest arcs from the beginning of that the show to where she ended, as you had mentioned, from her sexuality to her now saying, oh, it's good to have you back. And, when you know, she brought uh, Rocco back. But Harley, how did you feel about Valentina? And, and I'll go back to you, the uh, movie man, talk about uh, Mia, if you have anything thoughts about her. But what did you think about Valentina, um, Harley, as far as her conclusion? I liked it. I think it was interesting because she was such a contrast from last um season with um, with Armand yeah and the fact that she was more open with being like upfront with her feelings than he was cuz he cuz when he, even when um when Tani was on that bike she was like you really going to get on here you know that. right yeah she was very she, like our mom was very like talk behind the guest back but she was very like upfront being like even when Bert walked off the boat like, you're pretty old i'm surprised you made it this far so yeah very very in your face and I wish they, and like what D movie said, I wish they explored more of her sexuality more. Mm, and mm-hmm. they um, presented that more up front than they originally did in the season. I think that would right. have been thing than anything yeah. I yeah, no, I agree with you. I think someone mentioned the comments earlier really that they read somewhere that they heard there were some cut scenes, which every movie and show has cut scenes. But I think characters like her and also Mia and also Mia and uh, Bert, you know, that the little friendship relationship that they had, you know, of her talking to him for briefly two seconds last week to her like, oh, I got the gig and hugging him like, wait, there, there seemed like there was a scene that was missing there between those two. So I definitely think Valentina was probably a victim of, unfortunately, character development and, and little things like her feeding the cats to her being hit on. At at the bar. I think there were probably a couple other scenes that really fleshed her out. But like the movie man said, I think that the actress did a good job of giving us more than what she was given on the pages, just from like her way she carried herself, the way she delivered lines. I think she definitely delivered in the in the in the, uh, in the role. But going back to you, D movie man, your thoughts on uh, on Mia, man, uh, uh, individual who when we first met her, she just broke up with her boyfriend, um, Valentina or Lucia's like, hey, come with me to go do this, and you know maybe find some fun and find yourself. And uh, she definitely ended up getting what she wanted, which was, you know, playing at the hotel and, and maybe finding a music career. But what do you think about Miss Mia? Uh, do you man, were you satisfied with her? Or was it just kind of like, ah, she was okay. Right. Um, I was real iffy on Mia from the beginning. There was something about her. I was like, eh. And I don't know if I thought that maybe there was something that she was hiding or that the character mm-hmm. um, might have some ulterior motives. I was kind of, I was really kind of on the fence about her initially. And then I kind of, as we went along, I saw that, oh, she's kind of being roped into this lifestyle that she's not really interested in. Like, right. it's not, everyone's not built for that. Right. Um, you know, if that's, if that's life um, for you and it works for you, cool. But like some people literally cannot handle that and just, it can, it can be a lot to contend with. So then when I saw that, um, even for that bright, that kind of small moment with the piano, I was kind of like, oh, like I like, even if it's something like small, sometimes when a character has an aspiration, like I kind of, depending yeah. on how it's how it's handled, mm-hmm. um, it's really easy for me to kind of get behind that and really want that character to, you know, achieve what it is, whatever it is they want to achieve. And seeing her kind of have this small breakthrough and the audience respond, I was kind of like, okay, like I, I'm kind of, I'm here for this. So the fact that it, ended up working out, although it was through, she had quite a journey um, to go through and uh, weird, you know, relationships and and trysts and all that to kind of, you know, move through to get to that point. And it was through still very unexpected means, but I like that in a way she ended up getting something that she really did want. And um, in a way she did it without having 
it's weird. Like she made, you know, obviously not the greatest, not the easiest choices. I'll say that, but I don't feel like she became some horrible person. I feel like a part of her, whatever good ass, whatever um, part of her, her personality and all that. I just feel like she didn't sacrifice a bunch of a lot of herself to get to her end goal. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, I hear what you're saying. And, and Harley, I want you to jump in here in a second to get your thoughts on me. I, I hear what you say. I think for me, um, uh, and I mentioned it up top that I thought it was interesting that they paired those two characters together and the trajectory through the season of, again, her, Valentina, not knowing, or not not knowing, but not feeling comfortable enough to express who she wants to be with in her sexuality. And obviously looping that into me as someone who was just lost her boyfriend, was kind of closed off, didn't really want to do anything to living more of that lifestyle of putting your, you know, your, yourself out there more uh, professionally <laughs> speaking. Uh, and, and But at the motive was to eventually find her way on the keys, which she did. So it is interesting to see these two characters kind of get something out of each other or pull something out of each other uh, than they didn't have at the in the season but harley how did you feel about this young lady um from first meeting her to seeing where she ended up having sex in the church my ass someone says she's born man that ain't, that ain't a born trait to me man you know having sex in the church is pretty unholy um <laughs> but <laughs> harley what did you think about her 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 growth her development or lack of what did you think about this character i felt bad for mia she, i think she was put in a situation where she didn't really want to be in um mm. I feel like she was just tagging along with her friend who wanted to live that lifestyle mm -hmm. and use today. Am I using other people? To right. And Mia was the opposite of it. She just wanted to be able to get out of whatever she was going through with her ex-boyfriend and finding herself. And she ended up doing exactly what she wanted, which was singing. Right. Right. And in this comment here, and, and to get your thoughts, Harley, too, and, and to finish up your thoughts on this, but I don't think she's manipulative. I, I honestly don't think that, but go ahead, Harley. And I don't think so either. I think she yeah. is really misunderstood. I think she just really wanted um, more for herself other than just to um, do what her friend was doing, which was, you know, being a hooker and everything. And she, I think yeah. she uh, live her life. You know, essentially, I'm just in uh, the movement. Do you feel like we got another comment from Silver saying that she felt like that she was, uh, you know, cutthroat and someone else mentioned their manipulative? I, I don't feel that way because, again, I don't think, um, I mean, listen, Valentina knew what she did, right? Or before she, you know, she had her thoughts about what at least Lucia did. And obviously, she kind of put two and two together when they, when she kept seeing them at the hotel. So it wasn't like she didn't know, unlike uh, Albie, who didn't put two and two together with uh, Lucia. I don't think she was being manipulative. Um, but I don't know. How do you feel about the movement? Do you feel like she's cutthroat, uh, uh, manipulative to Lucia or not Lucia, but to Valentina in this situation? Uh, yeah, I personally didn't get cutthroat. I understand what I think people are, are coming from, um, and especially with how things, I mean, she definitely used um, kind of what ended up happening with Giuseppe, um, you know, to her advantage. Um, I saw that more so as kind of like, you know, seizing an opportunity, which I understand can probably have a negative connotation. But to me, she just kind of seemed like, to me, it seemed like Lucia was kind of the person who, who was kind of the leader. And Mia was right. kind of like a tag along, kind of go along to get along. Like, oh, I guess I'll do this. Or, oh, I guess so. You know, and I didn't seem like she, I think she, it didn't seem to me that she had much of her own voice or real uh i don't know it, it seemed like a lot of, of of her mindset was to follow behind lucia and right, you know, right. Being through this process kind of discovering like oh hey there are still things and even outside of this relationship like kind of having to rediscover like oh there are things i want to do outside of just this situation but i do understand like it the optics of it don't look great um right. i still that's what i was saying like i don't think that at the core she was a horrible person but, right. You know, right. No, I, I totally agree with you. I'm just kind of thinking of what you were talking, just replaying in my head, just little moments of when the tides shifted for her, which I think was ever whenever she slept with the piano, it's in episode four or five. She had told Lucia that this is our moment. And she came up with that epiphany, like, I need to sleep with the piano guy. And we know how all that played out. I mean, listen, and not going to the cutthroat analogy, but I do think there was some just thinking about that she gave that man pills and not knowing what those pills were going to do to him just to get on the piano. So it is kind of a vicious cycle. Like, I don't think she was being cutthroat with Valentina. 
But I definitely think she was being cutthroat and almost could have killed the man uh, to get on the piano. So there, I, 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 I can see where people are coming from in that perspective. But uh, I don't think it's as mal malicious and as detailed and as uh, thought out as let's talk about these characters here. And I'm talking about Lucia, who's one of my favorites, by the way. I thought her swag was on 10 every time she was on camera. Uh, I thought she was a great, great actress. But tying it into this family, ladies and gentlemen, let's start off with you, Harley. And let's start off with Lucia. Um, we find out in this episode that her little pimp, you know, um, abusive pimp, the story she made up was literally that. It was made up because we see her hugging that same abusive pimp, alluding to this idea that she set all this up, whether it was going to be with Dom or his son, she ended up getting exactly what she wanted, which was a lot of money, which is going to probably be enough to get her to that trip to L.A. Talk to me, Harley. What did you think about Lucia? She, no, she was a cutthroat one. <laughs> could understand like why she wanted it and why she did all that just to get all it. I, can, I can understand why she did it. I'm going to play like devil advocate and be like, the reason why she, she did that was because she don't want to be stuck there. Like I think she's tired of doing what she's doing, mm -hmm. even though she probably wants to keep on doing it. Right. But um, I think she did it so she can do more and hopefully she get out of that situation. <laughs> I mean, look, if she was able to get 50 grand out of or 50 euros uh, from Mr. Dom and Sicily, I'm pretty sure when she goes to L.A., she's going to make a killing. Because I thought um, yeah. I think it, when even when she got in like in the car, I was like, this, this doesn't even feel right. Like this felt like it's set up. Exactly. That, and yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, Harley, because I said it in my review whenever that was episode six. That just seemed too convenient that he just randomly popped up. He was able to follow them. And then the fact that she got in the car and not only got in the car, but came back, no, you know, no, this is supposed to be an abusive guy, no scratches, no marks, no nothing. And she just came back perfectly fine with Albie Car. I'm like, there's something. This seems like a setup. And ultimately it was. D movie man. Um this is set up from the beginning, man. We go back to episode one, and I'm going to try to bring it up on the screen here. But very early on in that episode, we saw her walking past, um, what's my man's name? Uh, I, I think his name was Alexio, if I'm not mistaken. She walked past him, alluding to that she probably was like, this is the game plan. I'm going to introduce someone to meet the guy who she knew was Dom at the point and just wrap my fingers around them and get what I need, squeeze every little penny out of them as much as I can uh, from the get-go. So D-Movie Man, how do you feel about Lucia and how everything played out with that character? Yeah, Lucia was my favorite character <laughs> by far. Um, yeah. I just think, and I think she's a big part of, um, I don't know, her and Mia, but her specifically, um, I don't know. There was something about her character that uh, just made this season a lot more compelling for me and really interesting to watch. Um, it's interesting to watch a character that may not be, um, what's the word, um, may not be saintly or, or innocent or <laughs> even above um, doing, you know, making the wrong choices or really like sticking it to people and, and just like, um, you know, getting the bag and running. Um, yeah. So I don't know. There was something very uncompromising about her in that way. And I like complicated characters like that anyway. Um, but yeah, I just, I think she knew what her game plan was. Um, she was willing to commit to that. Uh, yeah. And in the end, um, she got what she came to get. And I can't yeah. really be mad at that. Um, even if it makes her an unlikable character, even if it, if it is messed up how she went about it. Um, and I, I don't know. And maybe this is a, a, a life lesson for Albie to learn. I, I can't speak to what he really thought was, what was gonna, you know, I don't, I can't speak to what he really thought was going to happen there. His personal yeah. life, maybe it's youth and naivete. But um, in the end, uh, she set the goal, uh, she pursued the goal, and she achieved the goal. And she I did. Can't be mad at that. Can't be mad at it. Um, and the, you know, again, it, whether it was going to be from Bert, um, Dom, or Alby, she got it. She got it. And by the way, we got uh, it was over 304 votes of people when I asked the question earlier. Did Daphne and Ethan sleep together? And 80 percent of you all said yes. So I think we're all in the same wavelength there. Um, but yeah, going back to that, Harley, as far as getting, you know, just the plan and setting into motion, I guess the question I have for you is the whole Bert and Dom angle of it all. Was that a plot or conclusion to a plot that felt incomplete or felt a little 
I don't know, unsatisfying. And and before I get your thoughts on that, Harley, if we can, guys, hit that thumbs up, uh, share this, and more importantly, when I share their links in the description, make sure you follow Harley on Instagram and, and subscribe to Man D Movie Man on YouTube. But Harley, your thoughts on Bert and Dom, and just kind of like, I guess their plots is kind of fizzling out at by the end of the show. How do you feel about them too? So Bert and that was the son and the the father and son, right? Fa yeah, yeah, the older uh, uh, F uh, Murray um, and. Um, Christopher from uh, uh, The Sopranos. I can think of his name right now. But yeah, those two, yep. I feel like they could have did more with the characters. I felt like if they went right back to like their old ways. I feel like. Yeah, like what did they learn? They didn't learn nothing. They yeah. did. They <laughs> the looking girl and they all looked. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, they did. I'm gonna pull that. That's a great that you can love that you brought that up because it's the photo I'm literally about to pull up now. <laughs> but I, I like the conversation that they had at the with the grandfather and the um, father, and how he told him, like, I blame you for not showing me how to love nobody. Mm. Mm -hmm. That I didn't know how to love anyone. I basically got from you when mm. you thought you was discreet. And I had to watch my own mother cry every night. Right. So I wish they did more with that. I think they could have did more. Mm -hmm. um, because they all basically really the same. They Even though you don't like what they said, but you have to at one point agree with what the grandfather said. We, we all wired like that, supposedly, all men. But I feel like <laughs> they did more with that. Yeah. I ain't like Not, that at all. Yeah, it's <laughs> the movie man taught to us, man. What did you think about again the whole idea of this three generations of starting off with Bert and being um that he came from a certain generation? Not that he, not that he represents all men of that particular generation, but the idea of these men discreetly having affairs, you know, they're the breadwinners of the house and they come home and cooking clean, wife's doing all that stuff. And as he moved on, his son watched that. He saw his dad not being as discreet. He saw, like Harley said, his mom crying at night for 50 whatever years they were married. And then how Albie reviews that or views that he's going to be more respectful for women and give them money and, and kind of play the game and get played. Uh, but how did you ultimately feel about the Burt Dom and even tying Albie into the mix? Did you feel like those, those, those plots, those storylines felt satisfying that they have something to say and, and end up stick the landing on what they had to say about them? Um, I thought where someone said they were the least interesting aspect of the show. And um, I, I don't yeah. disagree um, just as far <clears throat> as what we saw from them throughout the show. But I did think, I actually I did appreciate and find that last shot very interesting. Yeah. Because it reminded me of um, that quote that says, uh, those who don't learn from the past are doomed to repeat it. Mm. And to see this generation of men all follow the same pattern is right, actually right. kind of sad. Um, but it's kind of it speaks to uh, the tragedy of what you pass down, um, what you know, what children see, what they emulate, and you know the behaviors that they emulate and continue to pass on downward. So it was, it was kind of um, it was it was kind of sad, and it was. And the thing is, you know, they're trying to connect to this other side of their family and they're trying to, you know, learn more about each other. And, you know, it, it's meant to, this trip is meant to serve a certain purpose. But in the end, um, there's something kind of futile about what it says about the three of them and then what that will look like, you know, in yeah. the future. So, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it is. You know, it, it, it was kind of. um a little bit of a letdown because I was thinking this whole time, Bert, Mafia, Godfather, last week when he went to go visit, you know, his his, his relatives, she, one of the older women said something about money. So I thought it was going to tie into something about that, but it didn't really end up going much of anywhere besides, as you all mentioned, his last shot of here of them not learning a lesson and Dom paying off his son to talk to their mom and we're assuming they're going to get back together which uh is kind of just like as you mentioned even man rinse recycle repeat he's going to repeat the same behavior because he really didn't learn anything uh, at the end of the day and even more or less his son is now roped into this uh deception of pimping out his mom for you know for for you know uh, the way he did so it is kind of anticlimactic with them and i thought there was going to be a little bit more of a conclusion with these characters and i think there was probably 
some some stuff left on the cutting room floor for Dom and Burt, if I'm being honest with you all. Um, but before we move on to some more juicy characters, I see some people in the chat saying, can we can we get to the to the juicy stuff? We're, we're going to get there. And that's Tanya. Uh, we're going to get to Miss Tanya, slip and slide uh, here in a second. But uh, I saw a super chat that I just wanted to uh, thank the person for and showing some love here. Where was it? It was Silver yet again showing some love. And Silver said, uh, Mia doesn't want a trip to L.A. She wants that store. Yeah, I mean. She's she's got a you know she's a piano player now and she might be able to get some of that money from Lucia and, and open up her own store. So we'll see what she does with. Uh, oh, we won't see because I don't imagine we'll see these characters again. But I would imagine she's uh, she's gonna you know she's got some a bright future ahead of her. And she also and again thank you Silver with another super chat. Lucia wants to store. Oh, okay, not Mia. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, she's gonna she, she wants to store. She wants a trip to L.A. and I think she's uh, she can afford it now if, if you ask me with all that money she was given in tonight's episode. But Moving on to this grouping here, and um, and you know what? Again, is there out of all these characters, will we agree that Lucia was probably the most interesting and most compelling, and had probably the best conclusion? The movie man and Harley. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And Did everyone, that, yeah, go ahead. Want it? What was that? Did, that? Did she say what kind of store she wanted, or she just said she wanted to open the store? Uh, I would. I mean, listen, I'm not a fashionista, but I would imagine she got some swag on her. I would imagine it's a clothing store. Uh, based on her and that, you know, going, she wanted to dress at the beginning of the season, all that. So I think it'll be a fashion store. And if it is, it'll probably be fire because her 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 wardrobe was pretty on point for me. But uh, yeah, let us know in the chat, guys. Out of all these characters here, Dom, Bert, Alby, and Lucia. And you know, before we wrap up, just D movie man Harley, just quick thoughts. <sighs> Alby, come on, man, you you got play like a Nintendo sixty four, man, like come fifty fifty thousand euros, D movie man and Harley, and. Man, the movie man. I mean, come on. I, I like to think I'm a nice guy, but I ain't getting sucked out of 50,000 euros, man. Talk to me, the movie man. What, what, what's going on with Albie? Uh, um, again, um, <laughs> I want to maybe say this points to some um, some kind of savior complex that may have arisen um, due to his father's yes. actions and even his grandfather's actions. Yes. So there's this need to perhaps... Uh, save a woman or be the opposite of, um, you know, the example that has been set. Um, but unfortunately, there, you, even with that kind of mindset, you can't go so far to the extreme that you're willing to kind of do whatever to for someone or doing whatever to save a person, especially when you don't really know them. Right. Um, so I just think that was his mindset. And I guess he was just so far gone that he was willing to, <laughs> to <laughs> I guess, give that amount of money. I. I can't act like I even begin to understand. I've had certain young and naive moments, but I can't say I've been Not there. Like that. Not um, like that. Yeah. So I just think that um unfortunately it it stems from it it comes from a good place, but um I think it's a place of of disruption because of what he's seen in his family. Right. Um and as we see that can kind of be dangerous. Thankfully nothing bad happened, but right. that can right. really become another situation. You know, Harley, D movie, uh, D movie man says something that I just I wanted to pose this to you. Do you think? Because the way he told Portia, which we'll talk about them next, Jack and all that stuff. But the way he told, yeah, I got played, and he seemed like, like, listen, he was I would have, I would have been this, I, I would have been, no, I would have been on no plane. So yeah, I got played. No, it would have been a whole other story, right? But I think, and, and going back to D movie man's comments, what if it was almost like in his way? getting back at his dad like you know what i'm gonna give this money you know i might be getting played but at least my dad's gonna be fifty thousand dollars uh less rich and you know and i don't know is, is there any part of you that thinks that albie kind of knew he was getting played accepted it uh got something out of it you know they did have some sexual encounters these last few nights um do you think there was something in albie that knew he was getting played and he's okay with it because at the end of the day it wasn't his money i think so i think after a while, because he obviously knew what she was doing, which was she, she put him out. Yeah, escort. Uh, even I don't. I just don't think I'll be okay with just like somebody getting <laughs> all that money from out of me. Because I had to look it up and see how much that's. The convert. Yeah, anyone in the chat, let us know how. What is fifty thousand euro? I'll actually I'll just Google it. But if anyone in the chat knows off top, what does that equate to in American dollars? U.S. Let's see. Fifty thousand euros 
Oh, 52. Is, well, I don't know. According to Google, 50,000 euros is equivalent to 52,000 uh, US dollars. I could be wrong. But that's, that's, what, it's, it's that's what I thought too when I looked it up. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I don't think I could. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I have to find you. Like, look. Yeah. I'm, listen. It would have, yeah, you know, it would have been some some furniture moving. I tell you that. Uh, the movie man. The, again, I guess to pose a question to you: Do you think that in some way, somehow, he knew he was getting played? He was okay with it because, again, he got something out of it, right? Um, in that in that sense, with Lucia, and he also was kind of maybe getting back at his dad. Like, I'm gonna hurt you with your wallet. Uh, I'm gonna maybe bring our family together for our sis my sister's sake and the family's sake, but at the same time I could still get a get a kick out of my dad. Or do you think he was completely oblivious with the situation? He's just like, you know what? Live and learn. Or maybe not, because we learned early in the season that this is something that happens with him. He seems to want to save women and they're not women that's necessarily meant for him. Yeah. I was gonna say like even even because I did mention the savior complex, but I do think that his like given his like given his response, I think uh to me, at least, it feels like he had some awareness uh, on some yeah. level. And I think that, um, and I don't know how, how was the word? I don't know how uh, how far in advance or when he had the realization, but the way he bartered the money um, for the situation with his mom and all that, I'm like, is that, uh, I'm just wondering, like, underneath that, is there a desire to, try to see the family reconnected in some way, even though it's a really right. messed up dynamic to return to. Right. Um, and is there, <laughs> and with that, is there a sense of like, okay, I can give her this money, she can go on in her life, and now on to the next thing. I mm. kind of see that um, with his reaction. I think, I don't think he was just the complete like, oh, gee, I had no, I, I don't believe that given the progression of, right. of his experience with Lucia. He had to have some idea about it. I agree. I agree. I agree. Uh, but now getting to the juicy characters. And before we do so, I, I want to uh, thank, uh, I think it was Nicholas. I saw a super chat. It came through earlier. Let me try to find that. Uh, in the meantime, if you guys, again, just a friendly reminder, uh, hit that thumbs up if you can. It's it's free of charge, y'all. It's a free free way to interact with the channel and also show some support on the channel. Just a simple thumbs up goes a long way. So if you guys can do that, it'd be greatly appreciated. And, and share and leave your thoughts in the comments. And shout out to, yes, Nicholas uh, with the $20 super chat. No comment, just showing some love. And I appreciate that. And it looks like on that photo there, it looks, it looks like we got a runner here. So um, I don't know, Nicholas, let us know if, if you're running if you're running with um, Ethan tomorrow morning. Can you ask Ethan if he slept with Daphne? If you can do that for me, Nicholas, I would appreciate that. Because it looks like you're a runner and we know Ethan's a runner. So. All right, do that for us, Nicholas. But no, I appreciate the love and uh, the super chat there. But Harley, Harley, Harley. We talked about her briefly, but I think let's just go ahead and fully dive in. This is we got my man E Movie Man here. <sighs> this, this, these group of people here: Quentin, Greg. You know, shout out to Martin, uh, Tanya, Jack, and Portia. So take it away, Harley. Who do you want to start off with first? I want to get with Jack because let's do it. Talk to us. Talk to us. Jack, what's going on with Jack? Jack looked like trouble. Jack just looked <laughs> like he was just full of trouble. And he looked like he was very, like, it wasn't that he was suspicious. He was just so into Portia. Like, the first minute they met and so like, they got there, it was just something about him that I just couldn't trust. Even though, like, he looked good for her at that moment but once you started really getting to know all of these men especially when tanya when she saw the all the men in that corner i knew something was up i said something's something's ain't right about this and it mm. was they looked at too little bit too happy to look at her i was like there's something going on and i kind of confirmed it when i saw jack come up with um my own from his uncle his yeah. uncle uncle right quotations yeah <clears throat> yeah jack is an interesting character i don't think he was meant to have more than what he was given in the show um as far as he was literally a decoy he was literally just a plot device to distract tanya or to distract um portia to do their plan uh which we'll talk about here in a second with tanya but other than that i don't know uh d movie man do you have any more uh, thoughts on jack and and the purpose of his character did you did you care for how i guess at the end of the day he did i guess help portia in a way just just go just 
don't pretend this happened. Go about your life, live your life. Uh, what do you think about this character, Jack? Um, I knew as soon as, uh, which is is her choice. I knew as soon as she kind of started kind of not feeling Alby, um, and she saw Jack, and you know was kind of leaning in that direction. I had a feeling yeah. it was going to be one of those uh, the grass isn't greener on the other side type situation, yeah. right. like, or a frying pan into the fire. Like I was like, this is not going to pan out the way she thinks it's going to. And uh, now I didn't think that the reveal <laughs> with this character uh, would be so uh, in your face and uh, as graphic as it was. But, um, I don't want to get too graphic, but yeah, the uh, the Tanya quote, put it on a t-shirt uh, when she was describing what she saw. She said they were kind of, they were full on, you know what, in, uh, Tanya, but go ahead. Yeah. Uh, we'll <laughs> yeah. Um, didn't see that one coming, but it's very mm -hmm. clear that, because he had said something about like, he, it all, the way he had expressed it, because I think it was when he was drunk, but it was almost like he's kind of, kind of, was kind of stuck in this situation and, Maybe whatever they were supplying him, whether it was money or whatever resources, right. um, he was kind of maybe uh, stuck, trapped, kind of in this cycle of supplying that uh, to these men. And I don't know if it was just Quentin or if it was the others as well. Oh, like, right, it was getting tossed around like wreck, like, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah it yeah. seemed like it was not obviously not an ideal situation, and it was. And we see this reoccurring theme of sex being. Um, a tool. Kind of like this artist system, this commodity, and yeah. um, we just see that he's another example of how that seems to work right. uh, in these circles, especially with the rich. I agree. I agree. And, and to Stephanie's question here, does anyone else think that Jack was meant to kill Portia, but let her go instead? That's a very great question. Uh, and I think you might be onto something, Stephanie, especially the location that he was going to take her to. Um, and he even says, you don't want to mess with these people. They're very scary people so i don't know if he would have went it far i don't know if he doesn't look like a killer i mean you know i i wouldn't assume that quinn was a killer but uh i don't think i don't know if he was intended for that i don't know uh harley what do you think you think jack was meant to kill her and he just let her go by because he kind of felt bad you know what i, I feel like she's on i definitely feel the same way i, mm -hmm. I think he was supposed to kill her in mm -hmm. the fact that he <clears throat> mind after she rebuilt but like, when she exposed like what she was just told and thinking about what he was saying from the previous night when he was drunk. I think it came to her like something ain't right. Mm -hmm. What's going on here? And in fact, like he was like, you know what? I'm just gonna let you go. This ain't even worth it. Just don't, don't go back to that hotel. Right. At all. Keep on going. Keep it moving. Uh, movie man, do you think that was the, the intention? Was it Jack to take her out, killer? I think maybe if he had stopped anywhere else um, than where he did stop, it might have been like, oh, well, maybe not. But uh, those like abandoned, uh, I don't know if those like apart old apartment buildings right, or right. abandoned building or whatever. Like when I saw that, I was like, okay, we're about to get out and we're going to have to like march over and then it's lights out. So to me, the fact that that building was there. <laughs> To me, most of the time when I see that 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 in, in these kind of situations and yeah. I see that kind of building, that's the first thing that comes to my mind. Mm -hmm. um, and it just so happened to work out where the airport wasn't far away, but um, it definitely looked that way to me. Um, it was not going to be a a, a great outcome. What I right. Saw. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, I think uh, the more you guys say, I think, yeah, maybe and revisit the episode. Yeah, definitely can probably uh, get to that conclusion that that was the plan, but he just didn't follow through with it. Um, but now that just brings us to Portia herself, which I saw the memes, I saw the, the tweets online. That, yes, the wardrobe was, as I said in my watch along, was like a little girl who goes in her older sister closet and like tries to imitate a, a, a brat doll with a, a Spice Girls. Like this, the slag on her was not Lucia at all. It was very chaotic, to say the least. Um, but the movie man, how did you feel about Portia? Again, going back to episode one, we find out she's, she's very um, kind of desperate with money because she's working for her new boss, uh, Tanya, who we'll talk about next. But she's working for her. She's on the phone with her friend. She's like, I just want to be here. I want to just have meet a guy, have sex, forget about it, just live more on the edge and not be co so consumed with technology and my phone and all that to almost, as we're, I guess, alluding to almost dying, <laughs> you know, living that life uh, more freely. How do we feel about Portia and the conclusion that we get with her? Is it, is it something that was, you know, satisfying or was it just kind of an again kind of a fart in the wind um 
I'll be honest, the majority of the show, uh, Portia tap dance on my last nerve. Um, <laughs> he, I, I get what her character means, like, represents. Yeah. I understand, like, her mindset and her, and her ideology. Like, it's just that seeing a character be that flighty um, and, and not, to me, not that self-aware and just not just someone who is maybe in having an identity crisis or just really really isn't right. sure the direction her life should go in i definitely understand that and i can relate to some of that um but just seeing her kind of like you i mean know, d movement look at the swagger bro i mean look at the, the shoes the skirt <laughs> the, the, i mean it's a lot going on i'm sorry d movement go ahead i'm sorry no <laughs> and, and there was that that piece as well but um but yeah, it's just, you know, her character kind of just kind of, to me, her character was blowing in the wind. And maybe that speaks to just her um, place in life, where it's like, you know, I don't really know, like, where, where I belong. I don't know where I, you know, what direction, what path. I get that. But um, it was a, it was frustrating to see her kind of waffle back and forth and not really have the awareness. Because to me, I was so frustrated. And I don't know if this is just... <laughs> This writing because we had to create the situation, but yeah. when she like went when the man was when he was in the bed drunk and she was just laying there and nothing in her mind said like hey maybe I should see like ugh, like I don't know any situation where there's a clear opportunity to step away and figure things out and you don't take it I. Yeah, I was kind of tapped out <laughs> on her at that point. I'm glad I'm kind of glad she got away. I think yeah. if it was between her and Tanya, uh, we could have done away with Portia personally. But you know, she's not dead, and I guess I'm content with that. <laughs> yeah, and everyone, yeah, the, the clothes. You know what? And D Movie Man said it too. I think the clothes actually represents the character. Like she doesn't know who she is. She doesn't know how to, you know, from her shoes to her shirt. It's it's it's, it's a little bit of everything. So Harley, my question for you is, how do you feel about Portia? And also, <laughs> D Movie Man talked about the, the identity crisis or the lack of awareness. I think it actually, when you were saying that, D Movie Man, it brought me back to what Tanya said to her two episodes ago. You remind me of a young me. And as we know from Tanya in this episode, she's very not self aware. It took her literally almost to her dying to figure out what was going on. So I think there's a lot of relation between those two characters. But Harley, your thoughts on Portia and were you satisfied with how things played out with her? And please, Harley, give us some some fashion tips here on this on this outfit. I feel so sorry for her. And I definitely feel the exact same way as everybody else do, especially with like D-Man, like um, movie man. You can definitely tell that like, she was just unaware. She she was just there. Like she wasn't really interesting to me at all. Her clothes really made me mad. <laughs> <I> say, <laughs> the clothes made you mad. Girl? She looked like somebody who just said, you know what, screw it. I'm going to just yeah. like that. And I just, I don't think. I definitely agree that her clothes definitely represented her as a person. Yeah. She, she just didn't know what she was doing. She just one of those people that I'm just there, basically. Yeah, just there. Yeah. No, I agree. And, and I think it's, again, I think she's just a, 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 a another version of Tanya. Like Tanya said herself, and we know Tanya to be very kind of not that self-aware, but for her to be aware of someone like, wow, you remind me a lot of myself, speaks a lot to her. But yeah, I mean, hopefully she doesn't, uh, as she survived and didn't get killed by Jack, hopefully she's learned her lesson. And um, hopefully she'll probably give a, a person like Albie, who we all know, maybe she would have walked out with $50,000 if she would have talked to uh, to Albie a little bit more and, and, and developed that relationship. But yeah, Portia was a very interesting character uh, and a character that I think, you know, it's kind of like a whatever situation for me, the way things ended with her. But, you know, we'll see what comes of that. But now it brings us to, I think, everyone's one of their favorite characters, Emmy-winning uh, character and a character that ended up dying in a very interesting way, to say the least. And D-Movie Man, I think you know what I'm talking about. Everyone in chat, just go ahead and let us know right off the bat, did you see that coming? D-Movie Man, her falling off that boat, slipping and cracking her head open and dying in the water. Talk to me. Um, so I won't say that I, I won't say that I thought, no, I didn't. I had to think about it. No, I don't. I didn't think that Tanya would die simply because I thought she was going to be the, uh, kind of the one consistent kind of thread between, you know, yeah. however many seasons we got. Right. I right. thought she was going to be the recurrent, like, oh, so this, she's always. What's Tanya going to get into this season? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's not what happened. Um, 
It's interesting because uh, I, I guess what what made that last moment kind of bizarre is that um, obviously we get the sense that something was going to go wrong, but we got, we don't have the full context of why, which was frustrating. Um, you know, we see the first because for a second when she started, you know, firing off the gunshots and so on and so forth, and then she was asking putting questions, I'm like, please don't let, please don't let this be a situation where we find out this was all in her head or she, you know, kind of thought this whole idea up or was drunk or something. And that right. wasn't actually the case for a minute. Um, but it kind of seems like it was. And once she got up on, cause I, I literally, my eyes were out, my, I was looking at the stairs and I was like, the stairs are right, right, right there. there. We're yeah. getting up here. And yes, exactly. like, you can do it. You can do it. And I, and I just knew as soon as she, I, I didn't, I didn't know. I'm not saying I knew completely, but I'm like, she's either going to fall into this boat really, really hard, <laughs> or she's going to do this other thing. And the other thing is what she ended up doing. Yeah. She like yeah. banged her head and then she was out. And I still was hoping maybe, you know, she would kind of like suddenly like, oh, oh wait, wait, wait. Oh, back Start. Up. You know, thrashing around. No, she's she's gone. So that was a that was a choice. Um, kind of an unexpected one. And I think I would have been fine if I got that additional context. I guess we have to wait till the third season. But that's for me. That's what made that so frustrating. Like if I could at least have the reasoning or something behind why was this why was this plot happening with her, then I would be okay. As is, I'm like, yeah, I need a little bit more. Harley, talk to me. Uh, we talked about it a little bit earlier, but just to kind of elaborate on it more um, about how things played out with Miss Tanya and her, I guess, rewinding it. So Tanya is is someone we talked about a lack of self awareness. She, I mean, she's guns blasting uh, Harley. She's just shooting aimlessly, whatever's moving, she's shooting it. We talked about the stairs. She slips and falls, busts her head. Is that a is that a Tanya move, on brand move? How do you feel about the character? Were you surprised? Are you disappointed that we won't get more of her come season three? Talk to me. First of all, that was such a, a dumb move for her in me. Oh, so dumb. Like, so so dumb. Stairs, but that was definitely a Tanya type of thing. I said this is this is definitely her, but I did not expect her to die, and I really thought she was going to do like movie said was going to season three as she always did because I definitely want to find out what's going on with Greg where was this man at what was he doing for those two days who was on the phone I definitely have a lot of questions going in for season three but they did her wrong this season and this is the same man that she met at last season when she when he thought that he was dying was that the same mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Mr. Greg, who she thought, yeah, who worked for the, <laughs> the BLM. Which, by the way, uh, for those that didn't, and you can watch the replay, guys. But I, for those that didn't join me tonight on the watch party, this is my, um, this is my live reaction uh, to Tanya's death. And I'm gonna put a one in the chat if you guys can hear this. But this was my reaction to Tanya. Literally seconds before she did it, I said she's gonna fall and crack her head open, and boom! As soon as I said that, and and as you guys can see, this is the the, the action here. Yeah, I didn't see it coming, uh, D movie man. I did not see that coming a mile away. I thought, like Harley said, I thought that she was gonna be a recurring character that popped up in these uh, seasons, and we can you know, what what she's gonna get into this season, and that wasn't the case. So I guess that just brings us back to the big elephant in the room, Greg. We are left to assume that Greg. As she was telling Quentin, uh, or t I can't remember who she spurred. Oh, she told it to Portia on the phone that by her um, dying, he was going to get all the money. And that was exactly what played out. Um, well, at least that's what we think. So I guess the question for you, D-Movie Man, is do we assume, do we think that that's what happened, that he now will just get the money? I'm talking, referring to Greg. And he's going to be he's clean to go and nothing uh, ties to him. Or... Or, or, or D movie, man. We know that she comes from money. I'm referring to Tanya with her father being a whatever bazillionaire with oil or whatever she said he used to do. Do we think this will be a plot that might get resolved or, or, or wrapped up in season three because of her death and also those people on the boat? There's people, they got loved ones, I would imagine. Talk to me about Greg, D movie, man. 
um, I think that because Greg just uh, flew the coop and uh, never returned, there has to be, I my, my assumption would be that we should continue that storyline into season three because I just think that's that's odd for his character to just leave and we never see him again. We never write reference back to him and we're just left to assume like, oh, he, I mean, I understand we saw the picture. So we know that something, you know, is, is not right in that situation. He might be involved in some kind of way, but we don't know the specifics. So my thought would be with season three that we're going to like pick up with that character I'm assuming at the next, you know, White Lotus location, right? And see what happens there. You know, we saw him on the phone, you know, with someone uh, while uh, Tanya was kind of like listening in. There was was, was that Quentin, or are we are we assuming that's Quentin? Right, like there was some secrecy there, and yeah. so I I feel like if they don't, it would be kind of a wasted opportunity. So mm. I my you know personally, I'm hoping that they they continue that because it feels kind of unresolved as is. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Harley, I mean, just to toss it back to you with the Greg situation, um, I, I, we're assuming that he got the money, uh, and, and I don't even know. Did he fake his sickness when he said he was dying? Because there was a line he said early in the season where, like, you know, you you pay for the doctors and you're able to help me out, and you know, whatever, whatever. But I mean, do you feel like the Greg storyline will be addressed come season three? Because just a little, if you guys watch the little after show, uh, Mike White said that. He, I can't remember verbatim, but he pretty much said that, yes, this this would probably be something that they might explore in season three because of, um, you know, the cops are involved and they would want to figure out what happened and it might tie back to Greg. But Harley, do you want this to get dressed season three and, and how do you feel about the whole Greg situation? I think we definitely should get it um, explored next season. I can't just be left with, he just got the money. I don't think I'd be satisfied with that because there's just no way. I'll be happy with knowing that he got all her money because he don't, I don't feel like he deserved it. And he lied to the woman. I think from day one, mm -hmm. I think um, once he found out, well, I think once he definitely married her and that prenup was there. So even if he did divorce her, he ain't gonna get nothing. So if she just poof dies, I got all the money, which I think mm -hmm. is messed up. I didn't even know you could, if you have a prenup, if that person dies, he get all the money. I did not know that. I think that's yeah, good. I mean, yeah, that's the, uh, one of the reasons I'm probably never get married. No, <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, it is. Um, I guess when you said it was effed up that he got the money, it is just kind of just thinking about all the characters that ended up getting money out of a situation. And it might not be necessarily characters that might have deserved money. Uh, again, rather, how do you? I mean, we all like Lucia, but we don't necessarily think that she deserved to take someone's money and to play them the way that she did. But she ended up, you know, living on that, um, getting something out of that relationship. And the same thing goes with Greg. So it, it, it might not be a situation of good people end up on top, but these sometimes bad people get, you know, things and, and do nefarious things to do so. Which I guess tying it back to you, D Movie Man, with um, Quentin. Let's talk about him. And do we? Do we think this was all set up by Greg, or do we think it was all set up by Quentin? Like, with your thoughts on his plot, and again, tying it back to Greg, uh, talk to me. I'm just so kind of baffled by this whole situation, and the fact that we didn't see Greg in this episode is kind of disappointing, I guess. Yeah, um, there's a there's a lot with Quentin, and obviously he's running in some, I'm assuming, elite circles, and. I'm thinking within those circles, uh, there's a lot that goes on. I think the whole thing with Jack kind of hints at maybe one aspect of it, but there could be a whole lot more that they're into. I know they had mentioned, you know, like, oh, we get money to, you know, restore these properties. But I'm like, but what yeah. is but what is the money really for? Is it? I doubt it's really for that purpose. Um, and what, you know, with this money, like, who, what hands, you know, what is this money kind of, what hands and what... Uh, country like who knows how deep this could be going and right. it's clear that quentin and greg have some kind of um relationship and i'm not even saying like in that relationship you know in some sexual sense but they may know each other and they may be in on the same game and this may have been a I whole mean, a photo photo says it all they know each other back in the day yeah so this may have been yeah. uh <laughs> Maybe this is some con that they do uh, for various women, or it's it's right. you know, they have like a game that they know how to run, and maybe it mm -hmm. 
you know, extends itself to different people, different countries, and who knows what else. So, yeah, I think there's there's a lot more with Quentin and his people and who he has around him. I, and it'll be interesting if we find out more about that. It will be. I, and I think it would be a disappointment if we don't get that into uh, um, Nightingale Wednesday Nightmare, which uh, shout out to Wednesday on Netflix. Great show. Um, the tarot card, yeah, we never got that conclusion, but we all can, I guess, assume that that's what she was alluding to when she want, wanted to tell her something and she didn't get to fully finish what she was trying to say to her. But yeah, the Quentin, I don't know, man, I really, and I guess this could be the going back to what uh, D-Movie Man and Harley were saying as far as Tanya making it through the next, I don't know if season three is the last or season four, but being that one character, what if it's like the, the people attached to Tanya? moves on and we're going to get Greg through season three and whoever Greg's attached to, we're going to always tie it back to Tanya because it was Greg and Tanya that linked up. So maybe Greg's that moving piece of Tanya of a sense to moving into another season with that particular plot uh, could be that way into, I guess uh, that character reappearing or at least people that knew her. So that could be the case um, come next season. So I, I'm very curious to see if, if, if Mike White does, Mike White does bring Greg back, and if there is more explanations uh, on that whole scheming, if it was Greg's idea the whole time, uh, D Movie Man alluded to it. Do they do this often? Um, and who the hell was he on the phone with? Is he dying? I mean, it's just so crazy. This character that was literally in two episodes this season, there's so much left on the table. Uh, Harley, did you have any final thoughts on? on Mr. Greg or Quentin, and do you want to see this conclusion come season three? Or at least uh, something alluded to what happened. I feel like it was a setup. I felt like Quentin definitely knew what was going to happen. I mean, yeah, Quentin. Because I feel like Greg definitely did not want Tanya, I mean, the assistant to be there. I think right. he, he made that very obvious. Yep. That I'm trying to get rid of this woman. I'm so tired of this woman. Let me get her out the way. Right. I definitely think that it was all set up from the beginning. And that's because he's kept on saying, let's go to Silsie. And he said, I, I never wanted to do this. Right. So I definitely think it was a set up from the beginning. Damn, and I do hope crazy. that it, it's resolved in season three. Right. I definitely want to know like who's all involved because exactly. it, it's definitely deeper than those, those people that was on the boat and everything. Because the way they all like yeah, the, the mafia. I mean, the guy uh, Nikilo was there. He, the mafia is involved. So yeah, this, this this definitely seems like a recurring thing or some type of of scheme that seems to happen pretty often. Um, so yeah, it's just it's just unfortunate that we didn't get that 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 finalized uh, portion of it all. And it just makes me so curious. So like to the movement, was it a, a scheme from Hawaii? Was it a scheme for after they got married? Um, when, when did it all begin? What were the ins and outs of it? Uh, that's definitely something that I guess, you know, I don't know. Is, is that good TV show right in the movie, Man and Harley? Is it good to have these type of questions or does it feel a little lazy? I feel like I, I, I got to have questions in order for me to invest in it. If it's no, right. nothing that leaves me uh, wanting more answers than questions, more questions and answers than answers, I, yeah. I promise you. I, I need to have... I need to have them. And if it's not going to leave me like that, then it's no point in me really watching it because then it, it falls short Yeah, with everything. Shout out to my man, Kenny. Uh, definitely agree with him. If y'all can uh, follow this comment, it'd be greatly appreciated. The movie man, lazy writing, uh, mystery box, keeps you on the edge of your seat. How did you feel about it? Just not getting the satisfaction of that plot. Uh, and how did you feel about it? Um, some of the writing seemed somewhat lazy and I and like I said I because I don't I'm not in the writer's room I don't know what like what the specific motivation like the, I don't know what the thought process is so um so for me like I'm I, I say this all the time even when I do movie reviews that I'm fine with ambiguity and I'm fine with open-endedness there's always room for that I don't I don't need a you know let's cross every T dot every I right but I think right. when I think when there's too much ambiguity and we don't leave like a little something <laughs> like because uh, i feel like so much of this was ambiguity and i understand that some people they feel like things were tied together which it is um but to me it was done in a way to where there are still like questions right. and um i think like to me like with with <laughs> with tying a, you know how you know getting on you know portia kind of second guessing herself and not doing the making the the right choices or Tanya doing what she did and, and choosing to like hop off the side of the boat. I'm like, 
is that is that is it one of those situations where it's you know a <clears throat> convenient writing so that the characters end up in these messed up situations and now they're stuck um is it because it's, it's hard to say like what what reflects real life and what reflects rational thinking and decisions versus versus what we write to progress the story and i think that's the challenge there yeah well said well said uh and I appreciate you guys answering that question. Well said to you both of you all. And, I'm, and I have a comment here pulled up, and we talked about it in the review on episode five, uh, the Madam Butterfly Opera, which I'm not too familiar with. I had to Google it, look it up. And I'm looking at it now, and I'm just wondering, uh, as far as that that t connective tissue, it does seem like just based on what I'm looking at here, that Madam Butterfly was a story about tragedy. And I believe the main character, if I'm reading this right, this Japanese uh, character did it was, did she take her own life? I think she, I know her life was in it. But I don't know if she took her own life or if she was killed by her lover. But I guess it kind of makes sense being in the case that Greg would have been her lover and not directly killing her, but inadvertently getting her killed by her falling. So I guess that definitely ties back to that opera being what they saw that night and how it connects to the tiny character. So interesting stuff. But, uh, you know, I guess we just have to have a moment. Um Rest in peace to Tanya, guys. We, we, we're going to say goodbye to our Emmy-winning performance by Jennifer. And uh, she went out on her own terms. You know, she did take out some fools uh, with the gun, with her eyes closed. And, again, did the captain on the ship make it off? Did the guy that swam off the boat, did he make it? Is, you know, how are we going to tie this back to season three, if that is going to even be the case? Because, again, Mike White said on the little after show, he was like, oh, maybe it's a plot we explore, which wink, wink, nah, nah, might be something they explore. But who knows? You know, it could be a fresh new play. But I think some way, somehow, he wants to bring at least one character or plot into the next one. And I can see Greg maybe being that that window and doing so. So before moving on, and we're going to wrap things up uh, with our final characters here, uh, which, you know, we talk about them a little bit. But just to kind of wrap up how we feel about how they plot ended, just wanted to address uh, a couple of these Super Chats. And again, guys, for all, it's almost... 11.33 where I'm at, Central Time. So the fact that we got over 600 people still watching, I uh, appreciate every single one of you all. Thumbs up that goes a long way. It's free of charge. If you're enjoying the conversation, join this dialogue we're having, hit that thumbs up. Like I said, after the stream is fully uploaded, Harley's Instagram will be in the description. My man, D Movie will be in the description. Uh, where's Thor? Thor is chilling on the couch. He's tired. We went on a walk before I went live, so I tired him out a little bit. So he's taking a nap right now, but he'll be up by the time I get done with this and we'll watch some movies. Um, but check out their content once this video is uploaded. I would really appreciate it because they're great individuals, as you all can see, and they have a lot of great things to say. So definitely show them some love once we get their links in the description. So uh, just a couple of super chats, and then we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the couple and wrap up their plots. Uh, my man Randy saying, <laughs> from the street she came to the street she belong. Uh, future Hendricks, I speaking facts, I guess, Randy. Shout out to Randy with the super chat. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I, a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of truth there, Randy. I appreciate that. Uh, the homie Stephanie coming through with another super chat. So on some love tonight. Uh, I believe that Jack was meant to kill Porsche. I think we, e -movie, uh, D Movie Man and, Port, uh, and uh, Harley and everyone in chat kind of, I'm now I'm on that same page. I definitely think you all are right there. So I definitely can agree with you. And, and Stephanie, again, you've shown a lot of love tonight. And I appreciate you. Thanks. So thank you for that. Um, my man Earl showing some some love here uh, with the 1999 super chat. Uh, the key to love is being open and honest. Uh, okay, we're getting deep on this. Okay, the key to love is being open and honest. Uh, Mia and Albie are always upfront with their desires and communicate. Wait, hold on. Mia and Albie is always upfront about their desires and communicate them openly, uh, which is why they win ultimately. Um, do you think you referring to? Lucia versus Albie in that comment, but either way, any thoughts on that, uh, Harley or uh, D Movie Man on, on the honesty and if he is referring to Albie and Mia being open and upfront and ultimately winning, how you guys feel about that? Mm -mm. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I think, and, and Earl, if you're still here, did you are you referring to Albie or are you referring to Lucia? Because, uh, I think you might be, I, I may be wrong, I don't know, let me know, Earl, if you're still here, but yeah. The movie man, what you think about uh, Albie and Mia being more upfront with their desires and communicating them openly? Yeah, I was gonna say uh, it's like that's because uh, I, I definitely see that um, with Mia. Um, I guess the only thing that throws it off with Albie, I'm like, did Albie like win? I guess that's the only thing that that yeah, throws it off. Think, yeah. How, how yeah. would you say he won if he did win? I'm not saying he didn't. I just would want to understand that. 
And if yeah. it is Shia, then you know, again, that is someone who's up front. And let me, may, uh, let me make it very clear. Like, it, I don't, I don't, I understand. I know that there are certain things I wouldn't do, but when I understand like the mindset of a certain character and, and, and what they're willing to do to achieve their goal, whether people like it or not, um, and are honest about it, there's something in that that I just think is really interesting. And I um, can appreciate versus someone um, who is, you know, who is shifty and, you know, kind of moves behind the scenes and is kind of lurking and has ulterior motives. I'm like, if you at least know what it is and you say what it is and you progress in that way, then that's, you know, for me, I can't really say anything about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as far as the album, I'm just not sure as far as the dynamics. If you right. Know, that's my only issue. Am I wrong in thinking, Harley, the movie man, everyone in chat, that in a way, maybe, again, Albie being a nice guy, and again, going back to if he knew he was being played or not, was that money, not not that it it, it accumulates to 50,000 euros, but the money that he actually did owe Lucia for three nights and all the, you know, the dinner dates, I mean, I don't know if it would have been that amount of money, but that was maybe the payment that she was owed after her arrangement that was... uh done do, do we th hardly shaking their head now there's a little too a little little tip harley gave him you know there's no such thing as not that kind of tip <laughs> no, sorry the am, am i wrong in, in trying to give albie a little uh, alibi on why he gave her that money without any consequences you're trying your best eh? trying you know, like, i'm, I'm nah. listening I'm, I'm not mad at it in the end that money was like was like a few dollars out of his dad's account clearly yeah. Because he was right. not really bothered by clearly all the expenses that went into this trip uh, to Mia wow. and Chia and all that. Clearly, that was not a problem. The movie man, you just said something. I just, how, dude, Dom, he's the one that got you know taken advantage of this damn show because I totally forgot about that. She was charging the food, the clothes, all that stuff for six, well, probably five days on that man's car. I mean, he's going back. I mean, clearly money isn't an issue, but I mean, that's a pretty expensive trip on top of paying for the trip. But oh, my goodness. Um, but shout out to Earl uh, with the love and then Stephanie again with some more love. I wonder if Greg is going to have to pay somehow for what I think so, Stephanie. Again, based on the comments Mike White said and what we've discussed here uh, with that, those two characters, I think that we might see something um, in season three with some type of justice for Tanya. If we want to say that and, and get a better understanding on what the situation was. Was it Greg? Was it Quentin? Uh, you know, uh, get all that information would be very nice. Who was on the phone? Was he sick? Is he dying? Like we need answers, Stephanie. I definitely agree with you, but I think season three might give us answers. Hopefully, we'll see. But wrapping up this, uh, these characters and the season and all that stuff, um, D movie man, just let me know how you felt about it. You could pick any character, um, or a couple you want to start with, but you know, I'm referring to Ethan Harper, Cameron, Daphne. We already talked about the, the Daphne and uh, Ethan hooked up, but just in general, kind of conclusion with these characters. I think we can all agree that they were probably the most interesting characters throughout the season, the most like, juiciest plot that we got this season. Did it live up to the expectations in the conclusion? D movie man, starting with you. Uh, uh, in technically speaking, probably not. Um, I wouldn't say that I was going in thinking like it was going to be some huge bloody massacre at the end of the show, and it was you know. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say I was, bodies, I was bodies, 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 yeah. bodies, bodies. Yeah, I wouldn't say I was necessarily thinking that. Um, there were some things that kind of popped up that made me kind of that kind of threw off. It just kind of kept subverting my expectations. Um, and I don't even want to say this, but there was to me the way um, there was a point where because of the way Cameron was interacting with Ethan. And some of the stuff he would say, like, I want to be inside you and I want to make you feel good. I'm like, well, listen, I do understand everyone's friendships are different and <laughs> can joke around and stuff like that. But I was like, uh, is there something else going on here? Yeah. Um, but clearly that wasn't the case. Uh, so at one point, I'm like, is, this, is that something that's going on? Right. Uh, and I don't know, as far as the end, I'll just say this. I didn't think it was going to end with them just being like, okay. We're gonna go about our merry way. And, right. This was a fun you know, trip. Yeah, like we resolved to now, you know, continue our marriages and go forth into the future. I didn't see that one coming. Um, I would say maybe in that sense, it's a letdown 
because I, I don't know. I just I expected maybe more. Again, I don't not not people chopping and hacking folks or trying to kill folks or brawls or anything super, super crazy, but just something yeah. a little more than just oh we're good now. That was uh, unexpected. Yeah, it was almost as if season one. Um, I can't think of the couple married couples now, uh, couple's name, but the the new married couple with Alexander character uh, and and her husband, yeah. um, they had a very similar. You know, she she accepted them. She went back to the airport, and we assume that they're just going to work on their marriage. It was kind of that same feeling. Um, and Harley, I'm just curious on how you felt about their conclusion, and particularly these two on the screen now. Um, you know, going back to this very season, episode one, uh, Rocco talking about that headpiece and the significance of a uh, husband being killed by his wife and all that stuff. And even Daphne, she was making so many jokes in episode one about, Oh, I love true crime and murder cases. And we were all thinking that one, two, if not three characters out of this grouping was going to maybe end up dying based off of jealousy. But like he, the movie man said it didn't, which I don't know if that makes it better or worse talking social, the social commentary in that, that these people are just kind of, they just went through, you know, husband found out that his wife cheated on him. Husband might have cheated on his wife with his friend's wife. So I don't know if that speaks to the commentary of what was going on. And again, the whole central theme of how people use sex in this season. Um, so I don't know, Harley. I'm just talking at this point. What did, what did you think about this? these characters, the stories, satisfying conclusion or not? I feel like what was supposed to happen happens with these characters. Um they're all messy in their own yes. messed up way. Very, very much um, so, yeah. I think, what was the, um, not Daphne, but the other wife. Uh, Harper. Always would judge, yeah, Harper, she was the judgmental one. Like, she was always judging them. They just a little bit too happy for me. They sums up with their marriage. They, they just a little bit too perfect. They too touchy-feely for me. And, and then going forward to like when they went to the place and she was like and come to find out he did cheat on her with these hookers and him having to pay her I think first of all I don't think I would even just let that slide I don't think we can all be friends because the way he just sat down with them after he just beat him up and tried to kill him in that ocean I was like there's no way we all gonna sit down together and have have a meal together but they, they different. That's all I gotta say. Yeah. <laughs> they different. It's so much to say about them. Number one, you know, very early on in the season, I would have I would have never put my money on uh walking out of this season that Daphne and, and Cameron probably have the better, if we could say better relationship than um Ethan and Harper. Um, because at least they're this is the, they know what the relationship is. You know, Harper or Daphne has a kid with her trainer. Cameron gets to sleep with women um, and vice versa with Daphne. So they she kept saying she's not a victim. So she kind of she they know what they're into, you know, not to bring in the entanglement situation with Will and Jada. But, you know, they had a situation that got a little a little spicy and, and they know what they're adults. You know, no one's forcing you to be in this relationship. So their relationship is a little bit more defined. Um, but moving forward, I don't know what that says about Ethan and, and uh and um Harper moving forward. Uh D movie man. I mean, is this a relationship you can see evolving into Ethan? I'm sorry, into uh, uh Daphne and Cameron, like they're gonna maybe explore an open relationship, or do you think by the time they get home they're just gonna realize they're miserable with each other and, and separate? Um I don't wanna be negative, of course, because I like to have a hopeful outlook and you know love conquers all but the, the reality <laughs> is that i just feel like one night of passionate intimacy with each other i don't think that that's enough to yeah. um, i don't think that's enough to just gloss over uh the amount of issues and cracks in the foundation of their marriage i just think that there's a lot still there and it's nice to kind of like, oh, we feel good, and we hooked up, and we we and we reconnected. But you know, we're still kind of not literally in a honeymoon phase, but like we're in an idyllic right. scene. We had right. a really great moment, you know. Oh, yeah, we're now now we're about to fly, fly home. But you know, when you get home, there's the reality. And once the reality sets in, is your foundation stable enough for this marriage to continue, you know, to be built upon? And right. Right. me, it just seems like there wasn't enough there. 
and as jacked up as you know Cameron and Daphne are, they seem to at least understand who they so are. Good. Yeah, and, is, and it works for them. I don't right. think that Ethan and Harper have that in place, in my right. opinion. Uh, Harley, talk to us. What do you think about Harper and Ethan moving forward? Uh, do you see them maybe exploring other relationships while being in a relationship? Or do you think they're going to realize that? Because, um, again, just understanding Ethan and his character, someone that really didn't have time for dating and he came up on money. And I don't know if that was when his company sold, how long him and um, uh, Harper were dating prior to that. But do you think they're going to last after this uh, very interesting vacation? I think Harper going to realize that I think Harper's going to be one of those I think Harper is someone going to leave honestly because Harper at least knows and is self-aware to know that she that they don't have no compassion within their relationship right. and so I think she'd rather walk away knowing the life that Harp that the other couple is going through and knowing all of what was going on at that vacation was not what she wants at least i mean i would hope they would want to work it out but i don't first i don't think that would work out with me an open relationship yeah yeah no i mean no judgment to different strokes for different posts but yeah i don't i don't you know it's, Sharing your love to me is, uh, especially when you're married, it's like, why, why even marry someone if you want to sleep with other people? Like, it's, it's just, again, no judgment here, but uh, it's just, you know, an interesting way to live. But, you know, to each their own. But to answer my own question, yeah, I don't, I don't know moving forward with these two, if they go home, if they work on their marriage, if they're going to continue to lie, if they're going to be honest with each other, if he's going to tell her, yeah, I slept with Daphne and see how she takes it in. I don't know. And plus, I mean, they're, this isn't like they're going home and living in separate ways. Like Ethan and Cameron agreed to maybe work together in the future. He agreed to help them out on portfolios or work. So they're still going to be in contact, I would imagine, uh, if he still follows, follows through with that uh, business proposal. But it's interesting because uh, Harley said it to start off the season. Harper was very judgmental and and said every negative thing about their relationship in the book. And it's funny how her relationship ended up like it's so funny. I think it's just a, a, a conversation piece about how some people can judge other people's relationship but not pay attention to what's going on with theirs. Um, and it's just so interesting to see how that played into their toxicity, uh, if you want to call it that. But it's 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 interesting. But I will say, and I guess just kind of summing up this uh, conversation with just general opinions on favorite characters, if you have any favorite episodes, any favorite performances. Because um, I think we can all collectively say the finale wasn't maybe as satisfying as we wanted it to be, but just collectively looking at the season, starting with UD Movie Man, season one versus season two, favorite characters, favorite moments, and any any standout things for you with this show? Yes, so uh, <laughs> um, Armand uh, was was clearly the star of season one. Yeah, um, and I think, like I said, I, because it's an ensemble, I think everyone is interesting in some way. But he was definitely the standout for me. Um, and I love, and I can't recall her, her character's name, but I love Natasha Rothwell. Um, she plays Kelly on Insecure. Oh, and, uh, 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 Belinda. Belinda, yes, and yeah. so I love. <laughs> Um, I, of course, I, I love her anyway, but I enjoyed her character as well. And um, I just, I don't know, kind of where she is. At the beginning. How do you think she feels about uh, Tanya's death? <laughs> right, exactly. Because that was something that was kind of sad, but kind of funny at the end. She's like, look, <laughs> yeah. I'm over all of this. I don't have any advice. I, I'm over it. I'm out. Right. Um, so, yeah, so I loved uh, her character. Um, as far as this season, I, it's so funny because I just so happened to kind of look over my favorites this season, and I guess I'm team brunette because all of my favorite characters were brunettes. Uh, Albie, Lucia, Valentina, Ethan, and uh, Harper. Uh, those were all characters, the most interesting characters to me. I just found them entertaining or intriguing in some way. Um, don't know how it worked out that way, but <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, I think that they... They, they're both interesting uh, seasons. To me, yeah. this season was a little bit more compelling. I think the, the dynamics between the characters in the first, it's hard because I liked elements of both, but with the first, it was a little more oh, disconnected and I wasn't quite as invested yeah. in the first season. Um, whereas here, I think just, I don't know, it was, it was kind of like this building tension and I was a little bit more invested with all the different dynamics especially with um, Lucia and Mia kind of at the forefront, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. kind of leading the pack, and then all these characters <clears throat> falling in line behind them. 
So, uh, so yeah, so I enjoyed both, but season two hit a bit better for me, even though mm -hmm. I think season one had the better uh, conclusion to me. Yeah, I think I agree with you there. I think season two had a little bit too many, maybe too many characters, if I'm being honest. Um, right. And not all the characters, you know, the timing of it all or the sharing of the plots and satisfaction of the plots wasn't as satisfying in season one. But I think I, I'm with you, though, the movie. And I guess if you were to give it a score out of five out of 10 or, or a letter grade, um, and then ultimately, did you say season, did you say which season you prefer more? If, if you want to give it a grade and, and, and answer which season you would, which one would you push play on? first to rewatch um i guess now that we've gotten to the end if i'm looking at it like all around i'd probably uh press play on season one interesting and then do you I have a do you have a, a whatever your rating scale is on on this season what would you get it give it um i would give it like a b minus b minus um, okay. i think because i just felt like there was something about because to me uh, a, a lot of my appreciation of shows comes down to like uh, when it comes around, I guess just kind of my engagement within mm -hmm. an episode. And then from, you know, every like every weekend or every week at whenever it's coming on, like how am I excited? And like, oh, man, what's going to happen next? Like when there's that investment there, uh, that's when I know I'm in it. And so for me, I wasn't necessarily, you know, I was kind of divided on the first season. So I was like, I don't know if I'll watch the second one. And then I've seen a couple of mm -hmm. reviews and people were like, oh, we don't know. But I was like, let me give it a shot. And so then as I was watching, I was like, hmm. And then as I kept going, I was like, oh, like this is like, I'm I'm seeing all these little dynamics and pieces between the characters in a different way. Um, that kind of clicks for me in a way that maybe the first season didn't. But I think, like I said, getting to the end of it, um, I just think it makes me want to go back and watch this first season um, just to see how I feel now, having gone through it the first time and how I would now feel about that season now that I've gone through the second. Well said. So B minus and season one over season two. Uh, I can respect that. I can respect that. And by the way, to this comment here, shout out to Jessica. Um, I like Aubrey, but I didn't feel like she, she plays the same character and everything. I can agree with you, but I got two suggestions for you, Jessica, if you have the time. There's a new movie that Aubrey Plaza is in called the... Um, uh, Emily the criminal um, yeah. is something that I've never seen her do before and I would recommend you all give give that a watch. I think it's on Netflix so give it a watch Jessica if you have the time and to check it out it's much different than anything she's ever played before and another thing I would suggest is watch a show called Legion uh, which was on FX for three seasons uh, if you're if you're in the superhero content um, very mature thought-provoking trippy uh, superhero content you will see her do something that you've never seen her do before. So I can agree with most of her roles are very similar, uh, but those two projects definitely gives you a little bit more dynamic in her, her as an actress, because I think she's she's fantastic, and I can't wait to see her. I'm a big Marvel fan. Can't wait to see her in uh, 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 Agatha, uh, uh, Coven of Chaos, because she's going to be a, the villain, apparently, on that show. So we might see something different from her on that. Uh, but Harley, tossing that fully loaded question to you, favorite moments, characters, episodes which season did you prefer over which part one part two and if you were to give this season a grade what would it be i definitely agree with movie man um definitely season one was my favorite um i feel like it had more ramifications in season one especially from when the friend had had the guy to steal the mother's necklace and from there, that's when things sprout out of control because the man had the girl's drugs and he was over here just getting high with his employees and everything. They just took a left turn. Um, I definitely way too many characters in this season. I, I would personally give it a C plus because I think they could have been a little bit more gratifications. Um, I think it should have left us with, I, I definitely want I feel like for season three, we should definitely go with Gregory and whoever like mafia people is. I definitely think Greg should be able to pay for his sins through that way with the mafia people. Um, I did enjoy the season, but it wasn't as solid as season one, in my opinion. Interesting. And uh, you said was it C or C minus or C plus? C plus. C plus. Gotcha. Ooh, we got some tough judges here, ladies and gentlemen. We got B minus one man, D movie man, and Harley's like I'm giving it a C plus. Uh, I'm gonna be and, and also shout out to this. Uh, yes, like I said, that movie's really great. And then my man Kevin was in the chat. He asked a question about he hasn't seen season one or two. Would we suggest that he does that? 
I guess it depends, Kevin. I know you, we share similar uh, tastes in, in TV shows. It's listen, it's not groundbreaking. It's not you know, uh, I don't know, dark on Netflix. We're super complex or Mad Men or Breaking Bad. But I think it it, it does. It's a fun show, a weekly show, in my opinion. Um, that just explores these lives. I always thought it was just so funny that these people are on these beautiful vacations, Hawaii, Sicily, and they bring all their literal baggage to that ruins their vacation. And it's just like, it just shows you where people just kind of, you know, they bring stuff with them and not really appreciating what's in front of them. And there's so many metaphors and themes and things you could tie into, but I think it's worth it, Kevin. Again, it's not, again, it's not re rewriting history with TV show, but it's, it's a fun show. And if you like drama, you like, uh, you know, funny things or attention felt things. And if you like cinematography, I think we can all admit this is one of the most beautiful shows on TV. And also I'm a score head. The score on this show fantastic i downloaded season one score i haven't downloaded the second one but season one has this one very dark ominous i think it's called honeymoon where it's like it starts off kind of high and then it kind of gets into this weird creepy i'm a i love music as a character in itself so i think the score and cinematography kevin just watch it off of that alone uh and you might find some characters you can uh laugh at and relate to which speaking to answer my own question uh i i believe it or not harley the movie man i prefer season two over season one simply because I thought the tension and the drama was more integral and more effective, more so than what season one was meant to be. A little bit more comedy, a little bit more satire on you know privilege and, and all that stuff. I thought what the themes were were more prominent in this season, going back to season one being more about money and, you know, as Harley said you know with the taking of the necklace and how that kid was doing that to help his family it wasn't anything malicious it was something you know obviously still is bad but he wanted to do it in a good way and how that all you know like you mentioned in harley how it was a uh, domino effect but the way sex was used in this season this was this was listen this was hot and steamy and there's some beautiful people on the show you know from top to bottom and i thought the way that the sex was used in the show and also the darkness and the the dread and i mean the movie man jokingly said, you know, with bodies by his body, there was some death that I, I mean, it, was, it got pretty violent, man. So I think from a tension moment, from a, a perfor performances were great in season one, but I think, man, this, this, we talked about Valentina. I think she elevated her character. I think, um, you know, even, uh, you know, some of our other characters really elevated these kind of stereotypical one note, one dimensional character they elevated. So, I gotta go season two over season one. And if I on my I don't really rate rate shows like I do movies, but I would give it a a solid B or an eight out of ten uh on that scale or a four out of five on that scale. So I, I enjoyed it. it. It didn't have the most satisfying conclusion. But as you all know, that was here for the last five weeks. I was or seven weeks. I was pretty entertained for the last, uh, you know, seven weeks or so. And I think for me, episode five was probably the no, last week's episode was probably my favorite. Everything is kind of with the baby Lawrence being the baby daddy and, and obviously seeing Ethan wondering if his wife has sex or not. And the way that that tension, did she do it? Did she not? I just thought that was a brilliant episode of television. So I thought episode five, six was my favorite. And I'm going two over one, y'all. But the last thing we'll wrap this thing out with is Harley is uh, Mike White said that we might go to the East Coast come season three. If you can pick anywhere on the world that you would like to see Harley them explore with a new season three, where would you like them to go? And then this might be a tougher question. Do you have a cast in mind? Who, who would you like to see playing this world of Mike White in the White Lotus come season three? Uh, Will and Jada? I don't know. I'll just, I'll just... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> God, no, please don't do that. <laughs> Um, I was thinking maybe France, between mm. France or Egypt. That's someone said Egypt earlier. Yeah, that, that'd be cool. Yeah. Um, I was thinking maybe <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this, but somebody like um, Zendaya. <laughs> Go to Florida. Ooh. I think Zendaya will kill this. Give me some Rue from the Euphoria. The yeah. new man, we know about Rue in Euphoria. She's all types of messy. <laughs> um. <laughs> Tom Holland, maybe. Ooh, you going, you going, you going mega stars. Okay. Um, <laughs> no Zendaya. I love Zendaya. I love her. I would like to bring back her closer from before you as well. That was in season one. Um, Cassie. 
Oh, <laughs> oh, you want to see uh, you want to see Sydney Sweetney come back? Who was yeah, in season one? Oh, I would okay. think that would be such an amazing and the Mossbacher family where she she told her, um, bro, <laughs> wasn't you just sleeping with the Nate? So oh, like <laughs> listen, the movie man, we talked because we talked about Euphoria earlier this year. Listen, man, ain't no drama like Euphoria drama. Oh my god, ain't no drama like Euphoria drama. <laughs> Can't wait for season three if we ever get it in the next 10 years. Um, okay, so Zenzaya, we got some Sydney Sweetney making a return. We got Tom Holland, uh, and we want to go to Egypt. Okay, Harley, I see you. I see you. The movie man, I don't know how you top it, man. We, we going to what they say. Someone said we're going to Florida, getting ratchet. It's crazy. Uh, and, and who would you? And I, I mean, I would have never expected Aubrey Plaza, Theo, and all this cast to come together for season two. So it's, it's kind of an impossible question. But if you were to, you know, if you were casting, um, you know, and that was your job with this show. Who would you want to see in the season three, and where would you take it? Um, I would like to take it to Thailand. I would, I would love to see Thailand. Um, it's a very, uh, very beautiful, very unique uh, place, and I would love to see what the White Lotus looks like in that environment. Uh, just, um, I would love to see, of course. Um, because I think we only got maybe one or two the first season, and I don't think there were any this season. So um, if I could, uh, if we could have some, uh, throw in a couple of black actors, I would love to see someone oh, like yeah, I, I would like to see that. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone like Cole Berry, um, or, you know, maybe even Trevante Rhodes. Um, you you know, Issa Rae like, in the chat. Well, someone would like to see Issa Rae. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but I would love to see um, some actors like that. Um, yeah. And for me, I think what what I appreciate the most, even though like we have people who are identifiable, but just making sure that you know we have some people who are known, but I, I think maybe like lesser known actors, but really solid ones, because um, I like the Ooh, fact Kathy that Bates. You know, kind of a good mix. We have some people that we're familiar with and <clears throat> um, that are known and are popular, and then some that are lesser known, kind of up and coming. So yeah, I think as long as we get a good mix of that. Um, kind of get some diversity as far as who we see. That would be really nice too, if possible. Yeah. I like, yeah, I like Jessica Zazzy Beats. I would love to see that. And I guess just playing in that realm. Uh, so, and I guess um, for those that missed out on Mike White after the show, he said that he wants to take it. He wants to explore Eastern Eastern culture, uh, which might you know lend itself to somewhere in Asia. That would be pretty cool. I, I recommend it. Singapore. I would love oh, Singapore is beautiful. Um, it would match the you know, the production palette of what we've seen so far from Hawaii. And not that that's the only beautiful place in Asia, but that just comes to mind of just like elegance is, is going to Singapore. Uh, and then he also did say that he would, so he said season one was about money. Season two was about sex and season three, he would like to explore death, which to Harley's point about, and I don't know what my mind just thinks of when I think of Egypt, I just think of mummies, <laughs> but I don't know if that is something to explore a little bit more in death. And also too, we know, um, you know, outside of the U.S., outside of America, death is perceived very differently around the world. Um, some people celebrate it. Some people, uh, you know, think of it as a, as a continuation in the afterlife. So there's so many different ways to explore death that I think will be very interesting, which I don't know if that means season three would be the darkest of it uh, or if it'd be the funniest of it, however they handle it. But uh, last thing I'll bring up as far as who I would like to see collide on screen together Um and again, I, who no one would I would have never imagined to see this cast for season two, but there are some similarities. Like I think of the new married couple from season one is very similar to me as far as like a little bit of what's going on with Ethan and Harper and the 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 dude who was like a jerk in season one, very similar to Theo. So I'm trying to think. I don't know why Alexander Skarsgård is coming to mind. Uh, he's an HBO, you know, pro at this point. Um, Alexander Skarsgård, I would like to see a Zazzy Beats, which if you're going to give me Zazzy, let's get some more Atlanta alumni. Can we get Lakeith Stanfield? I think he would be a great kind of type of weird actor character to be mixed into a, a group of people on an island. Um, and let me think of a wild card. It's kind of a left field. Because we've gotten – Jennifer is an is a icon. F uh, Abraham – Murray Abraham's an icon of legend. I'm trying to think of just like an OG. What if we got someone like a like a Robert De Niro or like a Al Pacino, something of like that? Is that is that is that too big? 
to be on on HBO? Too big of a stars? Not necessarily. Um, yeah. It just depends on you know they cut the check. I think that'll be good right. To go. Right. <laughs> I'm trying to think of another, uh, and you mentioned, you know, to bring some more color to the, to the screen. I'll say Lakeith Stanfield. I would love to see a, ooh, what if like a, man, like an Angela Bassett, something like that. That'd be good. Would grace our presence so on a show like that. I would love I would, to see that. Let me see some of these suggestions here. Uh, Donald Glover, yeah. Um, I think, ED, you said, Trav did you say Trevante Rose? Or did, or Harley, did you say Trevante? He's a great actor. I uh, wasn't the biggest fan of Mike, but he he was great in that show. Uh, Nicole Kidman. See Nicole Kidman. She's already did the the uh, Pretty Little Lies. Is that what oh yeah, the Big Little yeah. Lies. Yeah. She was in a uh, Hulu show last year, which I wasn't a fan of. Uh, Perfect Strangers. Yeah, perfect. So she's already perfect. done like an island yeah. show. So I don't know if she yes, would want to put that on yeah. her again. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's any other. <coughs> oh, throwing the back more chestnut and Daniel. Ooh, Daniel Kaluuya. Okay. He's been on TV. He's, the first time I saw Dan Kalu was actually on TV. It was an episode of uh, Black Mirror. So, and I don't know if he's been on TV since, but yeah, I, I, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, and I'm going to read, I'm going to listen. I, it's a little bit late here. I'm going to read the rest of these comments. So, D Movie Man and Harley, I don't want to keep you guys because I know you got your lives and jobs to get to tomorrow. So, I'm going to, I'm going to stay on for maybe like another 15 minutes. If you guys have any final questions, drop them in. I'm going to read the rest of your comments, but I'm going to let my guests call it a night. Uh, D Movie Man, it's always great to see your face, man. Uh, I'm so, uh, I always love seeing you pop up on my, uh, you know, YouTube feed with a new review, even if it's a show or movie I don't watch. I just love hearing your perspectives on things. So, I'm looking forward to seeing what you got lined up for the people so if you want to let them know where they can find you and if there is something coming up soon that they can look forward to absolutely uh so um my last i've uh, been been a little sporadic because uh life is unique and varied and interesting <laughs> and it's been keeping me away but um i did uh manage to knock out a trailer reaction for they clone tyrone which is a really interesting film that's going to be hitting netflix in december so feel free to check that out I also just dropped my thoughts on uh, extremely questionable and uh, bizarre uh, biopic uh, of Marilyn Monroe uh, called Blonde. Had a lot of um, layered thoughts there. And now that it's the holiday, I plan on um, you know catching up, doing a quick uh, recap of some of the films I've seen, and kind of sharing quick thoughts and things like that. You know, Empire of Light, The Fablemans and just my general thoughts on um, just the upcoming films. Just now that I have the time and space, you know, I plan on jumping back in. So um, if you're interested in hearing and seeing what I have to say, please feel free to join, subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. Uh, the Blonde movie, it, it was, oof, man, that was, that was tough. That was tough. Uh, but yes, guys, as you can see on the screen now, I got his page loaded up. And again, I'm going to put his... Um, his link to his YouTube channel in the description of this video. Uh, again, he's got movie trailers, he got movie reviews, uh, trailer reactions, all that great stuff. So definitely show him some love. Uh, Harley, let him know where they can find you. And uh, when the YouTube does get up and running, what can they expect from that channel once you get it up and, and up and going? Uh, I definitely want to do more Star Wars reviews. Mm -hmm. um, I just finished watching Endor again. Um, I love that um, a season. Can't wait for season two. Um, you definitely see me with more like Tyler Perry's um, doing reviews for his shows that's um, I've been watching and stuff like that. Just watch out for it because it's going to come very soon. It's anything than you think. Awesome. I can't wait. I can't wait. And when, and, and when you do get the channel up and going, first comment, like, share is going to be from your boy. So I can't wait to get that channel up watch, and going. Did you watch this show? Which, uh, which show? Andor. Andor. Harley, I saw the I got the opportunity to see the first three episodes, and unfortunately, um, well, not unfortunately, but I I'm a, I'm a part of the critic association out here in my area, and I got hit with like a bunch of screeners that I had to watch for the last month or so, and this is like only half of it, so I, I unfortunately have to catch up to Andor. But I can tell you this, Harley, I, I completely agree with you from the episodes I saw and from what I've heard from people that watch it is fantastic. So I will definitely be going back. And going to a galaxy far, far away with my man uh, Cassie and Andor. I heard it was fantastic. So it was, it was absolutely amazing. Yeah, there was no like no no, uh, no Boba point. Fett craziness going on or Obi Wan Kenobi disappointment. I, I, I heard it's a fire show. Like this was what Obi <clears throat> Kenobi and Boba Fett was supposed to be. They just yeah. missed the mark completely. <sighs> Oof. 
And the fact that you get to cool. see like every every everyday life, I think that everything that we was asking for was in it, and there was no fan service, which was more amazing. Yeah, no Jedi's, no lightsabers. Yeah. God, thank goodness, because I would I probably shut it off right then and there. <laughs> lightsabers, but it's it's perfect. Yeah. The writing was perfect, and mm -hmm. I thought the twelve episodes would would be a problem, but. The way, yeah. and then yeah, based on the three episodes I saw, the way they broke it up into chapters made it very, a very uh, interesting viewing experience. D man, I'm, I know you did you want to say something about Andor or have you watched it? Oh, no, like that's on my watch list because yeah. I was I was scared because you know I didn't get a chance to watch Kenobi and, and, I was nothing that, and then all the stuff I heard, everyone was like, eh, nope, mm -hmm. no, thank you. Mm -hmm. So I'm now I'm like, uh, I guess I'll just keep going, you know, I'll rewatch The Mandalorian and watch Andor. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll there out of those three, I think Andor is my my number one. Ooh, over Mando. I, 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 Goku? No, I, I, no, I'm being, I'm just being funny. I've heard a lot of people say that same thing. Uh, I, Harley, as far as uh, Andor is that fire, Andor is that great? Is, is that great? And then yeah. it's the Mandalorian. Yeah, I, I'm kind of iffy on the last two because. Boba Fett is okay. Boba Fett, I'll say it for you. Boba Fett was trash. <laughs> it really trash. Was, it was horrible. If it wasn't for Mandalorian episode five and six, that, that would have been a complete waste of time. Goodness that gracious. Was, that and seeing Baby Grogu. Oh, Boba Fett. Man. <laughs> Ruin the character. But, uh, yeah, as again, guys, keep an eye out for Harley's channel. I'm gonna leave her Instagram link into her uh, to her. You can follow on Instagram for you guys to keep an update on when the channel's gonna get launching. And then my D, my man D Movie Man, I'm gonna leave his link to his YouTube channel in the description once this video is finally uploaded. Like I said, I'm gonna be on for another 10 to 15 minutes because there were some questions I wanted to get to and some comments. I don't want to leave y'all out because I appreciate y'all joining us. But again, uh, D Movie Man, Harley, any final words before we uh, yeah. go ahead? Yeah. So I was just gonna say, um, I, just, I just randomly thought, randomly thought of it. I would love Too to far. see a mother and son, uh, Sophie Sophie Okanito and Kelvin Harrison Jr. I, I don't I, know I, who I, Sophie is, but I can agree with Cal. That is one of my favorite actors in Hollywood. You know who Sophie Okanito is? So, give me a give me a movie, give me a show. Uh, the Secret Life of Bees, um, Hotel Rwanda, uh, the that TV show Ratchet. Um, I'm trying to blank. Oh like she's been in a lot. I think you know who she is. She's a great actress. Hold on. Which, speaking of life, would be I would love to see a Kiki Palmer. Uh, she's always good. <laughs> uh, oh, okay, I got you. Okay, yeah, I know who she is. I just couldn't put a face, a name with a face. Yep. Yeah, but they're uh, both really solid. I would love to see like a, a mother son uh, dynamic. Dynamic. Yeah, I agree with you. It's especially, oh, I love Calvin. He's such a great actor. Uh, so underrated too. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah, I don't know why she didn't. Yeah, I know she is. I know she is. I, I like that pick. I like that pick. Um, but yeah, any any final thoughts, Harley? Before we uh, I, I, I hope there's a season three. And if I also feel like if anybody else can also join this, I think Oscar Isaac. Ooh, I think he'll be amazing. Nice, I love it. And then, yeah, to, there will be a season. They they announced it. There will be a season three. It's just a matter of uh. Obviously, timing and of it all, but I would imagine probably sometime next year we'll get it. Um, but uh, on that note, I'm gonna say goodbye to my guests again. I'm gonna be on for another 10 to 15 minutes just to find, uh, finish out these questions, but I don't want to keep them too long because it's getting late, getting late. But uh, D it movie, is like man. 14 a.m. in my where I'm at. So. Oh, yeah, you need to go to bed, you need to go to bed, Harley. You're taking care of your, 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 uh, your family and you're busy. I know you, you get some rest, get some rest. And D movie man, <laughs> it's always a pleasure seeing you, man. And hopefully, we can uh, do some more. And same with you, Harley, do some more collabs come 2023 because we got a lot of movies. Movies, a lot of shows, and I uh, hope to uh, catch up with you all and, and talk about those movies and shows. But again, uh, I appreciate both of you all joining me tonight, and uh, we'll catch you on the next stream, guys. All right. Thanks so much, man. Appreciate it. Anytime. Take care, guys. All righty. So again, I'm going to stay on for another 10 to 15 minutes because I did see some comments. Uh, I want to read you guys' comments. And again, check. I'm going to leave their links by the time I upload this, the Movie Man's YouTube channel will be in the description, and my girl Harley's uh, Instagram will be in the description. Uh, but shout out to them. Big, big fans of their content and just wonderful people. And you always want to, you know, this YouTube space, it's always great to meet some great people. So, uh, all right, let me get to these comments here. Brad Pitt, Jada Pickett Smith, David Joe, okay. you shooting for the for the moon. I love it. I love that cast. And Julia Lewis, she's fantastic. Um, Selena Gomez, do this show. That would be great. Stephanie, I don't know if you watch uh, Only Murders in the Building, <clears throat> excuse me, which I've covered on the channel. I love that show. And no hate. 
I wasn't the biggest Selena Gomez fan prior to that show because the only thing I had really seen her in was um, Spring Breakers. Um, and I thought she was okay. But her and Only Murders in the, Bur only Murderers in the Building has switched my thoughts on her. She's a fantastic actress, and I love the chemistry with Steve Martin and Martin Short. I can't wait for season three. Paul Rudd's going to be in season three. Can't wait for that. But Selena Gomez would be a good pick. I like her a lot. Uh, Jamila, Jamila. Shoot, Jamila, Jamila. Oh, that's... um. Oh. They, they, oh, she was so shafted and She Hulk. That was the villain in She Hulk, uh, uh, Titanium, if I'm not mistaken. I would love to see that. And hopefully, they would let her, because she's in, um, what's that show about death? Um, I can't think of it, but she's, yeah, she's great. Great call. Idris Elba. Ooh, I like that. Black Superman, baby. Yeah, I like that a lot. Luther, I like that a lot. Uh, Rosie, per oh, ooh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. What was the last thing I saw her in? Oh, what was the last thing I saw Rosie in? Was it was it Birds of Prey? No, 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 no. She was in uh that 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 flight show on HBO Max. Um, I think it's literally called Flight. Um Julianne Moore, yeah, I like that. I like that. Okay, okay. Y'all got some y'all got some good ideas, y'all. And again, I know. It's 12, 17 where I'm at, and I still have to do a couple more things for the end of the night. So, oh, and by the way, this is self-promotion, if you guys don't mind. This week, I have my Avatar 2 review coming Tuesday. I have my Finally Saw Knives out a couple days ago. Going to have that review for you all coming soon. Um, Babylon, I got that coming soon. I put out my review for The Well, so keep an eye out for all that content. And also, there's a new show on FX called uh, Kendrick. Uh, which has been an interesting experience so far. We'll be talking about that. But back to the comments. Death is already exploring the show. It's uh, always – well, I think <laughs> that is true. But I think they're going to um, – the same way that money was used and the same way that sex was used, they might have death be a, a way to – maybe we don't open a season with a character dying, right? Maybe we um, – I don't know. I don't know. But I think there's ways to explore death than just, you know, someone's died. We got to figure it out. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what they do with that. But you do have a point. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I enjoy both seasons. I enjoyed both seasons. Season one was great. Season two was amazing. The relationship dynamics between the main couples were realistic. I'm a bit disappointed that Tanya died, though. Yeah, I think we all talked about that. It's definitely disappointing, but it does kind of fit the brand. The way she went out it was very, very Tanya-ish, if I can say that. Uh, it's going to be hard to top season two, but it's going to be a beautiful location for sure. Yeah, you, wherever they go. I mean, hell, like someone said Florida. <laughs> and I've been to Florida. No disrespect to my Florida, Florida Floridians. I don't know. Um, but they, <laughs> some places in Florida, it's, it's a little not the prettiest. But they this show can make Florida look pretty. But, yeah, wherever they go, I'm here for it because um, it's just such a great cinematographer and, and all that good stuff. Um, they, I need Greg. Yeah, yeah, well, we talked about that for sure. We need that Greg resolution. Uh, I, ooh, Anya Taylor Joy. And she did, she's done TV. She did a show called, it was a ch chess show. Jesus, I can't think of the name of it, but it was on Netflix. One of my favorite shows that year. She's done TV before. Um, and I would love to see her in an HBO show. That would be great. I love that suggestion. Um, let's see here. We need. Or, yeah, we do. Like, who? who's that? Is, ooh. Who can we I'm just trying to think of a... Jennifer, she's just such a... She seems like such a lovely lady and just such a unique individual. I don't know who could fill those shoes. I mean, I'm sure there's someone out there that could. But we need someone. It's going to be tough, Stephanie. It's going to be tough. Lakeith, y'all agree with Lakeith. He would be great, right? I think that would be great. Yeah, Daniel Kaluuya, Lakeith Stanfield, Yaya Dual Mateen. Y'all, y'all, y'all. All right, y'all, y'all killing it on these suggestions. Yeah, yeah. He's gonna be busy doing Marvel uh with uh Wonder Man. Um, uh, but I would love to see Yaya. He he's 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 done HBO, right? He did uh Watchmen. Uh, he was great in that. Um ooh, Jamie Lee Curtis. I like that. Has she, has Jamie done television? Has she ever done television? I'm sure she has, but I just can't think of anything I've ever seen her in. So, but I would love to see the Queen of Horror, the greatest. Final girl of all time uh, appear on that. Jeremy Irons, I like that. Anthony Hopkins, see y'all just Angela Bassett, y'all 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 rock with that. Um, Letitia Wright, she killed in a Black Mirror, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Nia Long, who Nia Long? Edoka, any basketball fans out there? What an idiot! An idiot! What an idiot! 
a double whammy. You you F up your day job and then you F up your home life with Nia Long? You doka? Stupid. Stupid, y'all. Uh, Jeffrey Wright, another HBO alumni with um, Westworld, and the show got canceled. So he got some free time on his hand between that and Batman 2. The old guy from Cicel. Put some respect on Brian's cock name. You know, that's my man, Logan Roy, which is one of my favorite. Oh, if y'all don't know, that's another show I cover on the channel, and I can't wait for season four. Uh, it's going down, y'all. Um, Ooh, yeah. Jessica, I like that. That's my girl from Euphoria. Um, I love her. I love her. Yes, yes, yes. You yeah, got Brian Cox. Yeah, I would love to see that. Logan Roy all day. <laughs> Uh, Jenna Ortega. I was hoping for you to say that Wednesday. Not that, you know, I, whenever I saw your name, I just I automatically thought of Wednesday Adams. <laughs> but yeah, I would love to see Jenna Ortega. And what a, what a year she's having, man, with uh, that movie on HBO uh, about the school shootings. And she was great in that. And um, obviously, if you guys seen uh, X and obviously Wednesday, and she was also in that, uh, that one uh, horror film with the band that's slipping my mind right now. Tessa Thompson, another TV uh, person. She's been on TV before. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, cable TV actors. Cuba Gooding Jr.'s son. I forget his name. Cuba Gooding Jr. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, I know you're talking about. I know you're talking about. I can't think of his name right now, but I know you're talking about. Yeah, anybody from uh, Secession. I mean, my man, um, Jeremy Strong, uh, the dude that plays Greg Nicholas. I can't think of his last name right now. Uh, Shiv, I would love to see. Yeah, there's so many great, so many great actors on that. I love. If you don't know, I, I love uh, Succession. It's one of my favorite shows ever. I like this. Brian Tyree Henry would be great. Would be great. Um, yeah, there it is. Yep, that's the guy. That's <coughs> that's uh, Cuban and Jr.'s son. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Owen Wilson. Owen Wilson. That would be nice. That would be nice. Yeah, I got some great suggestions. So again, I'm gonna we got a couple more comments here, but any final questions, comments, concerns? Um, it's getting late. The plan was to rewatch this episode tonight, record review tomorrow morning, and I and I have a screen tomorrow night. So I don't know. Let me know for all 417 you 417 of you all watching live, which again, everyone that dropped by tonight. That tuned in. We were up to almost 700. I really appreciate y'all. So um, if you can hit that thumbs up, just a reminder and subscribe. If you're just your first time watching, hope you enjoy the content. We got a lot of 1800 plus videos of movie reviews, TV reviews, and everything in between. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, but for all 421 of you all now, do you want me to do a formal review? Just let me know if you would want a review from me on like just my, you know, we talked about it for almost three hours, uh, three and a half hours now of my thoughts on episode. But would you want me to actually do a review? Uh, let me know. Because if so, I'll, it might not be the Tuesday. Uh, but let me know in the chat if you guys would like to see like an actual full thought out review from uh, from your boy. Let me know in the chat for everyone that's still here. Uh, Michaela Cole. Michaela Cole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Michaela Cole, she's great. She was great. And um Ah, geez, another HBO thing. She was great in that. Oh, Jean Carlo Espedito. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I would like that. Ooh. Shout out to Disco Ball. I like that. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Bartel is great. I love him in um, Werewolf by Night earlier this year or a couple months ago. Diego Luna. Yeah, we just talked about Andor. Yeah, he would be great. Okay. Neil, Michelle Pfeiffer. Listen, man. Back when I was a young kid, there was this movie that came out when I was like a baby by the name of Batman Returns. Now, obviously, I didn't watch it when I was a baby, but as I got older, you know, you know eight, nine years old, I think I saw Batman Returns. And I don't know, Neil, but when I saw Michelle Pfeiffer on the screen for the first time as Catwoman, Something just woke up inside of me, man. Like, that's beauty. That's a beautiful woman. <laughs> I would love Michelle Pfeiffer. She's great. Uh, not just her beauty. She's a fantastic actress. And, and Michelle Pfeiffer, has she? I can't. I don't know if she's ever done television. Not saying that she couldn't, but I've never. I don't know if I've ever seen her on TV. And I would love to see Michelle Pfeiffer uh, on anything. I don't even know the last time. Well, I guess the last time I saw her was like in the Ant Man movies, uh, which she's going to be in the new one. But yeah, I would love to see Michelle Pfeiffer on White Lotus. Very good suggestion, Neil. I like it. 
Um, let's see here. All oh, the ladies from Desperate Housewives. That's funny. Um, and again, any final questions, comments, concerns, and if you would like to, yes, please. Hell yeah, I would love it. Uh, or Sandra O, oh, yes. Uh, Tony Collette, okay. Yes, thank you. Boba Fett was trash, trash, trash. Um, let me know in the chat if you guys want me to do a, a formal review before we, we peace out. And I'm going to try my best to get it up by tomorrow. But if not, maybe Tuesday, Sarah Paulson. I like, I like. Rachel Wise, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Adam Scott, speaking of Adam Scott, any Severance fans in here? If so, expect Severance coverage on this channel like we did last year. But even more of besides the reviews, we're going to do theory videos. We're going to do live streams. We're going to do after shows. Severance 2023, if it is indeed coming out next year, expect a lot of coverage from that. Adam Scott, uh, Brian Craston, Jason Bateman. <coughs> One of my favorite shows ever. Mary Toons, Ozark. Marty Berg. That's my guy. Uh, what character would you like to see return from season two or next season? Great question. Um, return from this season, I would love to see. Obviously, we talked about Greg because that's just from uh, selfish reasons. I want to get that. Well, not selfish. I just want to see that that plot be concluded. Um, so definitely Greg from this season. And then also, just besides Greg, I would like to see, because I love Aubrey Plaza, to see what went on with her and uh, Ethan. So I would take those over, take them over. Um and then, or next season, return from this season or next season. Yeah, so those would be the characters. And then from season one, I would like to see uh, a couple of those characters return if, if, if possible. <laughs> Shirtless. <laughs> get him. Here, I got one for you. Get Yaya and get uh, Michael B. Jordan and get uh, uh, my man Kang, uh, Jonathan Majors. I mean, the ratings for that season would be crazy. <laughs> Would be insane. Uh, Charlize Theron, okay. Has she done TV? Uh, Oscar Isaac, yeah, we talked about him. Kate Winslet, oh, speaking of Kate Winslet, speaking of Avatar, full review coming soon. Uh, but speaking of Kate Winslet, Mayor of Easttown, I mean, oh my goodness, I love that show. Covered it on the channel, I miss it. Another show I covered, and now let's talk about hot and spicy. Oof, her... Jennifer or Jessica uh, Chastain and Oscar Isaac just being two beautiful human beings uh, on screen for six hours. Come on now. What characters from season one and two would you like to? Oh, yeah, yeah I think I just answered that. Uh, but thank you for the question. Kelly, thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you all enjoyed it. If so, hit that thumbs up. Hit it up. Hit it up. All right. Um, yes, definitely do that. Jessica or Jenna. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. I haven't seen Yellow, Yellow Jackets, but I heard it's great. Yeah, it's hard to replace her. She's such a great actress. Ooh, we got a nice little list here. From Steven. <clears throat> Excuse me, Bella Thorne. Uh, he's okay. Samara Weaving. I like her. We talked about Jenna Ortega. Robbie Emil. Robbie Emil. Oh, that's, uh, wait, is Robbie? No, that's Steven Emil, his cousin from, um, What's that show on uh, Amazon? When, when you die and you come back, whatever. Millie. Oh, I love Millie. Shout out to the House of the Dragon. Matt Smith, Alexander Skarsgård. I think I mentioned him. And Jack Hoyt. Yeah, Jack Hoyt would be great from uh, The Boys. I love The Boys, by the way. I think Cam will blackmail Ethan into investing in his company. Couples would be there. Oh, that would be crazy. I like where your head's at, Rose. Um, Good place. Thank you. I couldn't remember the name of the show. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, she was so underused in, um, uh, what's my call it? <laughs> She Hulk, uh, Rosie, yeah, flight attendant, flight. I said flight, flight attendant. That's the name of the show. Yeah, Margot Robbie. She's uh, review coming soon. I have my little short review on it. Babylon is something crazy, y'all. She was fantastic in that film. Uh, coming out December twenty third, I think. But review coming soon. Florence Pugh. I like that. I like that a lot. T oh, that would be Tilda Swinton and Gary Oldman. That's like. We're talking some goats, you know? I think they're two of the greatest actors of their time. Uh, do you, Yeah, I do, Cruz. Not only do I watch it, but I reviewed all of season three every single week, and we'll be doing the same thing for season four, and we'll probably do an after show like we're doing tonight. So big fan of Succession here. And, and Cruz, you can check out the back catalog of my previous reviews of Succession. Big, big fan. 
Uh, Elliot, what are your thoughts on the new Avatar coming out? So, Kelly, I'm under embargo. There's a review embargo. I did get the opportunity to see it on Thursday, and I'm, I'm going to try to see it again tomorrow because um, I want to do, like, a spoiler review for it, and it's a, it's a, it's a lot of movie, and I just want to – if I do a spoiler review, I just want to make sure I remember all the main beats. But, uh, uh, Kelly, check out my out-of-theater reaction for Avatar to get, uh, like, a general impression because I can't review it because it's an embargo for it. But uh, – Check that out. And then Tuesday at 11, uh, full review. So keep an eye out for that, Kelly, to get my thoughts on Avatar. But um, I'll just say this. You're going to want to buy tickets. 3D if you can. IMAX if you can. You'll thank me later. Are you going to? Yeah, yeah, I think I just answered that. Uh, but yes, I will be. Uh -huh. Is it in March? Damn. That's awesome. Uh, but yes, to answer your question, Cruz. Ethan is Daphne's baby daddy. Y'all yeah, funny. Um, all right. I think we're wrapping <clears throat> things up here. Uh Queen's Gambit. That's what it was. Thank you, Steve. I can remember an excellent show. Laura Dern, funny enough, she was she was the voice of Abby in this show who played Tom's uh ex-wife. I always Mom, that was Laura Dern's voice. Uh, but as you saw from the phone, that wasn't Laura, Laura Dern in the uh, phone. So maybe they can cast her to be in the show. Jamie did Scream Queens. Jamie did Scream Queens. <gasps> yes, she was in Scream Queens, which was a fantastic show. Season two, I didn't like, but season one was great. Um, yes, thank you. I forgot that she was in that. Great, great call. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I agree. Y'all got some great suggestions, man. Definitely do. Yeah, Tessa Thompson, she's fantastic. Just about anything. Bullet Train was really good, and he was good in it. Probably my favorite character. Cinematography is always great with the show. It's one of the best looking shows on TV, hands down. So disappointed they canceled Westworld. Um, I hope they get picked up from the network. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. <clears throat> Formal review. Okay, that's one. If we can get more, maybe. I'll think about it. <laughs> yes, the separate review, please, after you had time to formalize your thoughts. And All right. Pressure's on, Elliot. Pressure's on. Uh, I'll likely be binging, binge watching the entire season this week. Now that it's over. Uma Thurman. Oh, that'll be great. This is full review. Yes. Okay. All right, guys. Well, I'll make it happen. I'll try to make it happen. I'll talk to my clone, see if he got time for it. Uh... Oh, great, great movie. Great movie. Um, is it crazy to say that I like Batman Returns more than OG? Am I crazy? Seth, am I crazy in saying that? Thanks, man. Michelle has aged beautifully. I agree. <laughs> I'm Michelle Pfeiffer's husband. I am Michelle Pfeiffer's husband is literally David E. Kelly. Is she? I don't know. Is that David E. Kelly? The guy from HBO? Is she? I didn't even know. I didn't know that. Cool. I'm a little obsessed with the show. <laughs> Michael B., Yes, full review. Michelle Husband. Um, I didn't know that. It's pretty cool. Yes, Severance. Oh, listen, man. Severance. I'm going to do my final top 10 of the year. Final, you know, top 10 movies, top 10 shows. <clears throat> Don't be surprised if the show ends up on that list. Got some Severance fans in the building. No worries on the review whether you can squeeze it. Yeah, I'm going to try to, though, because, you know, I'm a, I'm a complete completist when it comes to that. So I'm going to probably give a review, but I don't know if it'll be tomorrow. But um, we'll see. <laughs> John David Washington would be great. I like it. When is Severance coming back? I would imagine they're filming now. And it's not like a super CGI special effects show. When did season one come out? Earlier this year? So I would imagine by the end of the summer, Severance, if I were a betting man, they're probably going to be wrapping up in the next month. And I would imagine my summertime. Uh, who do you think gets nominated for Emmys from this season? Um, probably, yeah, probably Jennifer yet again. Uh, maybe Aubrey Plaza. Uh, also the young lady that played Daphne. She was or Daphne, um, Megan something. I thought she was great. Those are the three I can see getting. Jennifer, Aubrey, and Megan. <clears throat> I think we're winding down. 
<clears throat> do you review Severance? What am I? Yeah, I do. Uh, check out my reviews on the channel. Also, Servant. Yep, been a day one, a one. And I'll be back finishing up season four uh, when it drops. Gene, great. Oh, Gene. Gene would be great. Gene Smart is a great actress for sure. And she's on. I heard uh, Hacks. I heard that's great. Timothy Shell. <laughs> Ezra Miller. <laughs> Ezra Miller. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but Timothy Chalamet, that would be cool to see him on TV. Uh, Christian Downs would be great. Oh, okay. That's a good suggestion. I like that, Stephanie. And again, Stephanie, listen, shout out to you. Shout out to everyone, but shout out to you. You were on the watch along. You're still here. It's 1230 at night, and you've also donated to the channel. Um, MVP goes to you. I appreciate you. Everyone gets an MVP award. But you get a you get a special one. You were I appreciate the support and everyone. Like I said, I appreciate everyone that's been here since seven o'clock to now. Hope you guys enjoy the content. Uh, Catherine Zeta Jones. Yep. Oh, Jesse Buckley. I love Jesse Buckley. She's so great. Um. Okay. Oh, we got a super chat from Elvis J with the love. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate you. Um. Don't comment. Just showing some love, and I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ezra Miller. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Margaret. Oh, really great. Ooh. Margaret's great. If you guys haven't seen Leftovers, one of the best shows ever. Daisy Edgar Jones, um, Fresh. She's in a movie Fresh that came out earlier this year. She's great. Uh, Vanessa Kirby, I love her and everything. Um, CVN, fantastic. Adam Sandler, that would be pretty crazy. But yeah, very great suggestions there. I like that list a lot. Um, all right, guys. I think. I don't see anything else. Unless you guys have any final questions, we will call it a night. <clears throat> and again, I guess, and um, I'll say this now, since we got uh, a good amount of you still here. Listen, man, you guys are awesome. These last seven weeks have been great. Um, you know, from my first review of this show to where we are now, we've we've grown uh, the community. We've we've uh, you know added new friendships and new conversations and i've and i've, I've really i'm really appreciative of that i uh, hope you guys enjoyed the content this last seven weeks and uh, i can't wait till season three we'll be back man covering this show whenever it comes back maybe next year uh but in between then i will be here covering more shows more movies for you all like i said this week alone we got uh knives out to review avatar to review um babylon review kendrick review um, you know, in the coming weeks, expect top 10 movies of the year, top 10 shows, most anticipated movies of next year, most anticipated shows of next year. So it's going to be busy over here. I'm just thinking about time where I'm going to find that time, but we're going to make it happen y'all. Uh, and then in between then I'm going to have probably other movies that I've seen that you guys can keep an eye out for. Uh, and we're, we're approaching 2023 y'all. We're just a couple weeks away from that. And I, I got big things planned for this channel and I can only accomplish those big plans with you all's continued support. And I appreciate y'all. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're knocking on the door to 45K, getting to that 50 mark hopefully next year, and just continuing to grow, man. Like, y'all don't know what this channel means to me uh, personally uh, for many different reasons, but just from a simple standpoint of just being able to chop it up, link up with some awesome people like yourselves uh, for various different shows and movies, it's, 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 it means a lot, man, from starting from 2017 to where we are now and, and where, we, where I you know hope to take this channel. Uh, and I hope you guys can join me with that on that journey. So, again, thank you all for watching these reviews. And uh, hopefully maneuver the review for tomorrow for this episode, for the finale. If not tomorrow, Tuesday. But, uh, again, from me to you. Yes, that's that you right there. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Yeah, you right there. I appreciate y'all, man. Y'all are awesome. Hope y'all have a great week. Hope you have a great day. Um, and, man, yeah, you guys are just awesome, man. And I think we got a couple final comments, and we'll call it a night. <clears throat> um, let's see where I leave off. Stephanie, again, thank you, MVP, y'all. Um, thanks, Elliot. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to the chat. Thanks to the chat. And before y'all leave, thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up if you didn't already. Thanks again, Elliot, for the great chat. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, hit that thumbs up, y'all, before y'all leave. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe. You know, we have fun over here. At least I think we do. Uh, this was fun, Elliot. <clears throat> Thanks, Chad. Have a wonderful night. Yes, have a wonderful night, everyone. Thanks for the chat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good night. 
all this, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Cameron Diaz, good night. 2 a.m. on the East Coast. Steph, listen, man. Appreciate you. Uh, all right, y'all. On that note, be safe out there. And little tip, if you ever find yourself on a yacht, and if you ever find yourself being attacked and about to lose your life, and if there's a boat that you can escape with, just take your time and walk down the stairs to get on that yacht versus what Tanya did. That might save your life. All right, y'all. Catch you on the next one.